Robertson Stadium here on the campus at the University of Houston. It is a Tampa Bay kind of day for the South Florida Bulls. You're talking 70 degree weather, slight breeze, absolutely beautiful, not a cloud in the sky. And Jim Levitt and his South Florida Bulls believe everything's coming up sunshine for their program. They have an opportunity to go to nine and two. Imagine year six of football, Doug Graber, and you are nine and two. Now on the other side, Dana Dimmel can tell you about the tough times. He was winless a year ago, but the Cougars have improved to four and six this season among the losses last year of 45 six pounding by the South Florida Bulls and Houston will receive the kickoff inside the five yard line and the Bulls pull them down at right about the 20 yard line it is a 15 yard return the quarterback for the Houston Cougars Nick Eddy 11 touchdown passes 11 interceptions on the season the wide receivers keep an eye on uh, Bell and Robinson, Joffrey Reynolds, the number one running back in Conference USA, and this is a huge offensive line, all over 300 pounds. In fact, Chris Redding, the left tackle, checks in at 375 pounds. There's a look at Nick Eddy, quarterback last year against the South Florida Bulls, 14 of 34, 139 yards, no touchdowns, no picks in that game, and he'll go right to the air, and he finds Robinson. Robinson, first down yardage before he is pulled down by Courtney Davenport. 13-yard game. Now the defense for the South Florida Bulls brought to you by Beefo Brady's. Of course, Greg Walls leading that South Florida defense up front. He has five sacks at linebacker Kawika Mitchell, one of the top linebackers in the South. 106 tackles on the season to lead the South Florida Bulls. And the defensive backfield, J.R. Reed, has played excellent football here late in the season for the South Florida Bulls. First down, and it's Reynolds with the football for the first time. He has a gain of four yards before he is brought down by the South Florida Bulls and Greg Walls, who we just talked about. You know, now that really the strength of this uh, Houston team is their offense. I mean, they're pretty darn good. 389 a game uh, is their average offensively. Uh, the, the problems for this team has been turnovers, and they've had problems on defense all year. Gain of two yards on the play, second down eight. Three receivers spread out for this Houston offense. Coming over the middle and making the tackle. Breaking away, in fact, on the reception. It was Brandon Middleton, who's one of the more dangerous wide receivers in Conference USA. Now, here's a guy that's averaging 25 yards per reception. Yeah, you know, he, this, he can really, really run. And uh, there you see the, uh, the job by Kevin Verpale to come up and run to the football and making that tackle. Middleton on the season, four touchdowns. He's got eight touchdowns over his career, again, averaging 25 yards per reception. Third down and a quick drop. Pass to Kikoa, ba to, uh, Kikoa Bell, that is complete for a first down. So this Houston Cougar offense, an offense that had trouble last year at Raymond James Stadium, able to move the chains here on the opening draw. And that's a little bit of a surprise, Al, because they came that whole opening drive with three wide receivers and one tight end, and they've normally been a two tight end uh, offense, and that's exactly uh, what we see right here. No, excuse me, they have a two back offense. They got a full back and a tight end on the field here now. This is more their base. Here's Reynolds, the number one ball carrier. In Conference USA, J.R. Reed coming up with a big hit for the South Florida Bulls. Reynolds on the season. Plenty of yards, nearly 1,400 yards, number six in the nation, averaging 134 yards per game. Good job by Maurice Jones, and also what a, what a year J.R. Reed has had. Both these safeties, uh, Verpale and Reed, have really been outstanding this year. One yard gain on the play, second down to nine. Opening drive, the South Florida Bulls and the Houston Cougars from the shotgun. Quick drop, Eddie trying to force it into Brian Robinson. Excellent coverage by the South Florida Bulls. Once again, J.R. Reed and Dewan Brown on the coverage for the South Florida Bulls. Yeah, look at this offensive line, 375 right here, just wrapping people up. I'll tell you, that left side of that offensive line, 375, 335, 310, 315, 305, all the way across the board, amazing. Well, they say everything's bigger in Texas. That is certainly the case with this offensive line. <laughs> A third and long for the first time today for the Houston Cougars. Houston, 44% on third down conversions throughout the season. Pass complete. 
Well, this is really going to be a tight spot here on this one. It looks like they're going to spot it about a half a yard short, so it's a key decision right now for Houston right off the bat. This is here. Mark Hopkins on the reception. Yep, that was what they call quarters coverage right there, and that's the weakness of the coverage in the flat, and here comes the punt team on the field for Houston. Fourth down and a yard. Jimmy McClary coming in to punt for the Houston Cougars. At least that's what they're showing right now. I'm back to receive. Ryan Hearn is standing at the 10 yard line. DeAndre Rubin has been out with an ankle injury. And McClary into a win. Hearn calling for the fair catch just over the 20 yard line on the South Florida Bulls. After the 26 yard punt, we'll take it over first and 10 from there. The first time this season, or excuse me, first time in this ball game that they have touched the football. And there's a look at Markwell Blackwell, the quarterback for the South Florida Bulls. Could this be his final game directing this offense? Here's a look at the numbers, and the one that just jumps right out at you. Only three interceptions. He's gone 199 consecutive passes without throwing a pick. Crosley, the leading ball carrier for the South Florida Bulls. Reuben, Hearn, Smith, and the tight end is Feldman. And it's a very young offensive line for the South Florida Bulls. First and 10 at the 21-yard line from the shotgun. The swing pass out to Crosley, left side. The defense of the Houston Cougars brought to you by Beef for Brady's Farouk Adelkin. Eight sacks on the season to lead the way for that front four for the Houston Cougars. The linebackers West and Braxton and the backfield. The key guy to keep an eye on is number five, Honick Milligan, the leading tackler on this ball club. In fact, he had a streak of 25 straight games with double, make that 21 straight games, with double digit tackles. That was stopped last week in Cincinnati. He only had seven tackles and a loss to the Bearcats. Crosley again gets up to the 25 yard line. Very little gain on the play and Delanell Reed with the tackle for the Houston Cougars. You know, this base defense for Houston is a nickel defense, which is really an advantage uh, when, when they play a team like South Florida that's so much the three wide receiver, four wide receiver. Here, in fact, you have no backs in the backfield now. This is an empty set for the Bulls. Five receivers, Markwell Blackwell lonely all by himself at the 26 yard line, third down and five. Blackwell with time. As a receiver with first down yardage, that's the senior, Hugh Smith. Smith, the leading receiver for the South Florida Bulls. In fact, he's put together a record-setting season for the South Florida Bulls. 58 receptions, 554 yards. He's had four touchdowns this season. Now, here goes South Florida. They're running their Indianapolis pace. That means they're very, very fast. They're going to spot the ball and run it. Crossley, right side, had 90 yards. In the victory over Bowling Green, has a good gain on first down. And here they go again, right to the line of scrimmage. They're trying to catch uh, Houston doing some substituting, and they better get this off. They better get the, off the field because they're getting ready to go. Four-yard gain on the play, second down and six. No score, just underway, opening period. 9.37 left to go here in the first. Again, the handoff. Again, it's Crosley, and the Cougars are ready and waiting. And uh, Houston, normally uh, not a big blitz team, but let's take a look at it right here. Here's a, they run right into the blitz here, just no place to go. Pretty well picked up by South Florida, but they just the odds aren't there. And uh, this is a team that normally blitzes about 30%, and we've already seen about a 60% blitz ratio here on these first two series. And again, they're trying to catch Houston substituting, and they're going to be able to get 11 on the field. Five wide receivers for the South Florida Bulls from the shotgun, third down and long. Blackwell against a three-man rush. Looking down the middle. He's got Hugh Smith. Smith with speed. Smith pulled down at the 10-yard line by Honick Milligan. That is a touchdown-saving tackle and a gain of 54 yards. You know, and you can see that one coming. And Markwell, Blackwell, you're going to see it right here against cover two. You get a great view of it. And look at the void in the middle of the field. And he reads it. And a great throw to Smith. What a job. What a job by Blackwell. A 54-yard gain, and the South Florida Bulls are inside the 10-yard line. Looking at the sidelines. And this is an audible from the sideline. Rod Smith is making this audible from the sideline. First and goal from the nine. South Florida on the move. Blackwell 
looking towards the end zone and the corner, looking for Iskra. Looked like he broke one way. The pass was going the opposite, pass incomplete. It'll be second down and goal from the nine. Yeah, th there absolutely was uh, some confusion there on the route. And here you see Marquell now calling the next play. They're not even no huddle, of course. They never huddle. Calling the audible and the play right out, right off the bat. Calling the formation and the play as he gets the signal from the sideline. Markwell Blackwell, 29 and 12 as a starter for the South Florida Bulls. The only quarterback right now that has more victories as a starter. Quarterback by the name of Ken Dorsey at the University of Miami. Markwell on the rollout. Looking for Hugh Smith. Smith able to get a hand on him, but that's it. Milliken in coverage for the Houston Cougars. And again, in the red zone now, this is the one area where Houston has been a real big uh, blitz team. And they, they brought the blitz there, and he had to get rid of the ball. He had him open, but just missed him by, uh, it would have been a great catch by Smith if he could have pulled that in on the sprint out. It was Smith that had the 54-yard gain that set up this field position. Third and goal from the nine. After a 54-yard gain, you want to find the end zone. Again, it's five. Wide receiver spread across your screen. From the shotgun on a blitz. Blackwell, one for the end zone. Blackwell with the touchdown for the South Florida Bulls. His 18th rushing touchdown, and the Bulls lead it at 6 nothing. You talk about turning a bad play into a great play, and that's exactly what this Houston staff was worried about. Look at his escapability here because they had him dead to right. They blitzed the no back set, and Blackwell just made that look easy, didn't he? Santiago Gramatica in to attempt the point after. That was a 70-yard drive, 54 yards of it coming up on one play, and Gramatica with the point after, and the South Florida Bulls have come on the road. Conference USA territory, and the Houston Cougars, they lead it by a score of 7-0. Markwell Blackwell with the nine-yard run for a touchdown may have come up a little bit lame. Boy, and that drive was all Blackwell. He made three great plays on that drive. Justin Geisler kicking off at the South Florida Bulls with the 7-0 lead deep into the end zone. And on the run, this is Roshan Pope. He's only a freshman, gets it out past the 30-yard line before he's shoved out of bounds. And the Houston Cougars already down by a score. Of 7-0, we'll take it over first and 10. There's a look at that scoring drive. Three minutes, eight seconds, 79 yards. The big play, the 54-yard pass on third down. It was Markwell Blackwell to Hugh Smith. Yeah, and also, I'll tell you what, that was a key third down conversion that he uh, uh, made to uh, Smith on the first third and five. And of course, uh, you look at the play here against cover two, which was a huge uh, play. And then the touchdown, they've got him dead to rights here, and he just teaches so fluid and mobile. And that's what the Houston defensive staff is worried about. So the Cougars are down 7-0. They have the football for the first time. They were able to get a couple of first downs on their opening drive. And here's a look at Reynolds. Runs into his own tight end, and he's knocked well behind. The line of scrimmage, you name it, he's on the tackle for the South Florida Bulls and leading the way, number 94, Tavares Jerniak. And uh, that's exactly what uh, defensive coordinator Rick uh, Kravitz was going to try to get done. And when they go with the two-back set, they brought the, the safety, the strong safety, Kevin Verpale, that time up into the box to get into an eight-man front. They feel they have to do that to stop this very potent rushing attack of Houston. Reynolds, more than 1,300 yards, the number one rusher in Conference USA, number six overall had 300 yards rushing against East Carolina. That intended for Brian Robinson behind him, and it'll set up third down and long. And again, uh, now that time South Florida brought J.R. Reed up into the box, and they played a three deep zone, and that's what Houston had to do. They had to throw the, uh, the th quick three-step game, just did not execute it, third and 10. There's a look at Nick Eddy. Again, 11 touchdown passes, 11 interceptions on the season. He had gone five straight games with throwing a touchdown pass. That ended in the loss to Cincinnati last week. He was only 10 of 23, very little art yardage, and he had three picks. Eddy with time, tries to step up, and he's going to take off, but Maurice Jones gets him by the ankle, refuses to let him go, and now there's a flag down. 
There were two flags down. I did not see what happened at the end of that play, but obviously it looks like it's against South Florida, which would be a key first down here now. Personal foul on the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So South Florida was on the verge of giving Houston a three and out. Instead, the personal foul puts Houston in excellent field position with the first down. Yeah, and that may have been a late hit on the quarterback here. Let's look at it. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Tavares uh, Jereniak had a late hit. And, uh, you know, that's just an aggressive uh, mistake, but really a foolish mistake. South Florida on the season averaging some, uh, some 12 penalties per game. They're among the leaders in the nation in that department. And Houston is just over midfield at the 49, first and 10. The Cougars trail 7-0. We're in the opening quarter, 6.56 left to go here in the first. Here's Reynolds trying to find some room, and how about Kawika Mitchell? He stops him. Now, Reynolds came in. Again, a 300-yard game against East Carolina with four touchdowns. This guy is one of the top weapons in Conference USA, but the South Florida Bulls were there ready and waiting. Well, we're going to track this all day long because, you know, uh, Joffrey Reynolds averages 5.3 per rushing attempt, and this South Florida defense has really been tough against the run. They give up an average of 2.3. So far, I'd say they're close to their 2.3. And right now, Reynolds, four carries, only one yard wow. today. Second down and 12. And again, Houston going with the run. This time, the freshman, Anthony Evans, and this time, it is Tim Jones from Lakeland. Just moved over this season to defense. Goes for a ride, pulling him down. And watch Jones here try to strip the ball as he uh, takes him down on the tackle. And boy, Tim Jones has really got a chance to be a good one. Uh, he's just a sophomore, and he's really got a lot of talent. And started the season at tight end, went to defensive end, plays some there, and also plays some inside at defensive tackle. Third down and 11 from the shotgun. Four wide receivers for the Houston Cougars. Eddie under pressure, and that's picked off by the senior, Kawika Mitchell. How about Mitchell with the move over at the 30-yard line inside the 25, so in what could be his final collegiate game, Kawika Mitchell picks off a lollipop and takes it deep inside Houston territory. Yeah, watch the stunt here. Watch Greg Walls now. Greg Walls comes right clean on the quarterback, and that's it. What a great play by both those seniors. 37 yards on the return for Kawika Mitchell, the transfer. Out of Georgia, the all-time leading tackler for the South Florida Bulls. The Bulls already up 7-0 with a lot of Bulls fans making the trip here to Houston. They're cheering on their offense. At the 24-yard line, first and 10. Blackwell had a touchdown run first time around. He finds Iskra. Iskra with the first down inside the 15-yard line. They'll mark this at the 12. Good gain on first down. Yeah, that's a nice 15-yard gain to start the drive and a, a very good timing on the sprint out and the throw uh, from Blackwell. And, you know, Blackwell is so good at sprinting to his left as a right-handed quarterback. He's got such great hips. He can make that turn and make great, accurate throws. All marked at the 12, first and 10. Mike Crosley just over the line of scrimmage, brought down at the 10-yard line. Boy, you're looking at uh, Kweka Mitchell on the sideline right there. Uh, what, a, what a year he has had and what a career he has had here at South Florida. I'm going to get a chance to coach him later uh, in the Gridiron Classic. I'm looking forward to it. Second down and eight. They have to take it over the two-yard line to find a first down. Complete to Iskra. Iskra trying to find that first down marker. He will be shy, and this will set up third down in short. And on that time, Houston brought a corner blitz from the weak side of the formation. And, of course, the South Florida was good here because they were sprinting out away from it. Right here now, look at him put his head down and try to get that first down. Third down and very short, and the Bulls get their offense on the field very quickly. Only one running back in the backfield, and that's Crosley. Crosley knocked down hard oh, by Honick Milligan, Boy. but not before Crosley gets that first down again. The big hit by Honick Milligan. He needs 11 tackles for 400 in his career, and check this out. Bam. He's a good one. He's the one. He's on the Thorpe list. He's a heck of a football player. 
First and goal from the one, flag down. Crosley near the goal line, and Milligan pulls him down again. Again, there's a flag down. You know, and this may be that South Florida, South Florida is trying to run that what they call their indie pace. I mean, they're running plays really fast, and they may not have been set. No. But it's against the Houston Cougars. So what was very short, first and goal from the one, will now be first and goal from inside the one-yard line. You know what? I'm sorry, Al, but you can credit the pace for that because they've got Houston on their heels. They couldn't even get lined up properly. They're running plays so fast at them. I mean, rapid fire. And that is the advantage of this offense. The Bulls learned that firsthand last season. Four wide receivers. Vince Brewer, the only running back. And Markwell Blackwell takes it in for a touchdown on the quarterback sneak. South Florida with the second touchdown from Markwell Blackwell. And you can run their lead to 13-0. Boy, and they ripped, they ripped Marquell's uh, helmet off. Uh, but obviously, uh, whatever injury, uh, take a look at the replay here. They spread it out. He does a good job of uh, ducking under the rush, just getting in the end zone there. Man, it's tough duty uh, when you get down to that goal line. That's a 24-yard drive. Only five plays all set up thanks to the interception by Kawika Mitchell in a 37-yard return, and Santiago Gramatica will try to make it 14-0. Gramatica is good, and so are the South Florida Bulls. They have jumped on the Houston Cougars for a 14-0 lead here on the road in Houston. The South Florida Bulls have truly jumped on the Houston Cougars, 14-0. Mark Wolf Blackwell, 5 of 7 in the passing department, 85 yards, and he has scored. Both touchdowns to the smiling crowd from South Florida making its way here to Houston to check out this very key game for the South Florida Bulls. Again, an opportunity to get nine wins in a season. Not bad for year six of football and an opportunity at a bowl game as well. Absolutely incredible record. Uh, amazing job by Jim Levin and this staff. And they, now they have jumped all over Houston here right off the bat. The reason South Florida is so good, you know, they're good on offense now. They've always been real good on defense, and they're good on special teams. Justin Geisler kicking off, trying to angle the kick, and Pope will take it. Nearly goes out of bounds inside the five-yard line, cuts it back. Javon Kamen is able to pull him down at the 12-yard line. It's only a 12-yard return, and Houston already down. 14 nothing will take over, first and 10 from there. You know, Pope really would have been well advised there to just let that ball go because I really think that ball might have gone out of bounds. It was kind of a foolish decision on his part. We've got 340 left to go in the opening quarter and the South Florida Bulls climbing all over the Houston Cougars at 14-0. When you think about Houston football, that's the man you think about. Bill Yeoman in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. There was the University of Texas, and there was Houston Cougar football. What a job he did, 160 victories for the Cougars. Yeah, they ran that Veer offense, and I'll tell you that they were really tough offensively. And here's a heck of a coach right there, too, and Jim Levin. They mark it at the 14-yard line, first and 10 for the Houston Cougars, already trailing 14-0 here in the first. That's Bell in motion. Play action, and what a hit! Coming in to make the tackle for the South Florida Bulls. Who else? J.R. Reed. He's been incredible in recent weeks for the Bulls. You know, that was an audible, and, and when they went in motion, they brought the blitz. And look at it right here. And I'll tell you, you told, oh, wow. Uh, no chance for the quarterback, Eddie, right there. That is a great job in the defensive game plan by that South Florida defensive staff. The 24th time this season that a Houston Cougar quarterback has been sacked. That was worth about four or five right there. <laughs> Eddie will tell you, he's still feeling the pain in that one. Three receivers, left side. Eddie from his own end zone, looking deep. Has a receiver complete and knocked out of bounds. That's the man we talked about earlier, Brandon Middleton, averaging 25 yards every reception. That one good for 37 yards. Yeah, and he ran an out and up here, ran an out pattern, and then he turned it up the field. And the South Florida was just a little bit slow reacting to that uh, defensively, Dewan Brown, and uh, he just got beat. That's all. But good execution by Houston. 37 yards on the reception, and I admire Nick Getty after that huge sack and that huge hit to be able to stand in his own end zone and put a beautifully thrown pass into the hands of Brandon Middleton. At the 44-yard line, play action. 
Eddie flips it out as he's tied in. In fact, that's his fullback, Tim Feathers. Six foot, 245 pounds, and he has another first down. So the Houston Cougars down 14 nothing. Coming right back. So he, he, here comes the uh, naked right here. And South Florida's in an eight. Whoa, what a, what a hit on Verpale right there. But again, that's a great job execution on first and 10. Two play action passes in a row now on first and 10. Ball marked at the 45 yard line, first and 10 for the Houston Cougars. They were backed up inside their own five yard line. Reynolds, no place to hide, no place to go. Maurice Jones to stop for the South Florida Bulls. Now the South Florida Bulls came in number nine nationally against the rush, giving up only 91 yards per game. Again, this Houston Cougar running game, number one in Conference USA. And of course, uh, there's Jim Levitt. And, and just earlier, you had a shot at Dana Demmel, the head coach, you can see him right here. Uh, had three very successful years at Wyoming. And of course, he and Jim Levitt were on the same staff at Kansas State. Demo played at Kansas State. He was an offensive lineman there under Bill Snyder. Play action. Same type of play. They went to exactly the same play. And this time, Feathers not able to pull it in. Looks like the pass was behind him. Well, you know, you're seeing a classic uh, Houston offensive drive right here now. Running game, running game, a lot of play action pass. That's their MO. Had them wide open. And, you know, they've been wide open in the flat every time. A little bit tougher to cover when you're in an eight-man front to stop the run. And that, of course, is what South Florida's been doing. They have stuffed the run. South Florida's defense has had success against Houston so far today on third down. Well, this is third down and 10 from the 44. Eddie from the shotgun swings it out to Joffrey Reynolds. One-on-one -on -one gets away from one tackler. Knocked out of bounds by the South Florida Bulls. J.R. Reed shot of the first down. And of course, uh, that's going to bring the punt team on the field uh, for Houston. Boy, it's a shame. Uh, South Florida had them backed up by their four-yard line. And of course, then the one big play, the out and up they hit, that was against a three-deep zone. That really hurt. They lost their field position. And of course, you know, uh, South Florida has some problems because DeAndre Rubin uh, has got an ankle problem and he's not back there as a return guy. Ryan Fisher will field the punt. He'll just let it bounce, and this is bouncing inside the five, very close to the goal line. And so for the first time today, the South Florida Bulls, after this 40-yard punt, will have very poor field position. 115 left to go in the opening quarter. The South Florida Bulls have scored the two times they've had the football. They lead it 14 0 over the Cougars. 14 0, the South Florida Bulls lead the Cougars of Houston. And the broadcast rights to tonight's telecast have been granted to Fox Sports Net Florida by the University of South Florida solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, transmission, other use of this program without the express written consent of Fox Sports Net Florida is prohibited. South Florida with poor field position for the first time today. They're backed up inside their five-yard line. But the Bulls lead it by a score of 14-0, the third time they've had the football in this opening quarter. And that was a mistake by Brian Fisher not to uh, fair catch that football. They'll mark it at the three. First and ten for the South Florida Bulls. Vince Brewer brought down very close to the goal line. Boy. Well shy. Houston thought they had a safety there, but, but he did a good job of just crossing the... And Lance they great Everson. penetration here. They ran an inside blitz and had great penetration. And uh, Alex Heron really got uh, stuffed on that one. And, uh, boy, that, 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 that's really tough now. Now you really got a problem. From the one, Mark Will Blackwell just tries to do whatever he can to get a little bit of room on the quarterback sneak, and he gets it back to what appears to be the original line of scrimmage. And that easily could have been a late hit that called there on that one. You see Jim Levin, he saw it as well on uh, Hanik uh, Milligan. Uh, really had a late hit on Blackwell, but got away with it. Again, before Houston is even Ooh. lined up, a flag is down and a fumble. This could get the Cougars back in this ball game very quickly. Again, there's a flag down. Boy, Gerard uh, Richard, uh, number 79, really made a good uh, play, got great penetration. Well, South Florida was able, was able to keep the football. The question is, 
did the Houston Cougars have enough men on, or did they have too many men on the field? Actually, now it's an illegal motion against the South Florida Bulls. They went up to the line of scrimmage very quickly. Yeah, they're going to decline it and put the punt team on the field. Well, I don't know. If I'd have been Houston, I think I would have wanted to take that penalty and, and, uh, and have, again, a chance to get them back inside the five-yard line. Devin Sanders is punting for the first time today, and he has a tough chore. He'll be standing eight yards deep in his own end zone. Sanderson oh, averaging snap. 42 yards per punt. He will have the wind at his back. Flag is down. The South Florida Bulls, after a 40-yard punt, able to pull down Kikoa Bell. Very short return. I thought he just threw down the marker uh, for where the ball was caught, but I'm not sure, Al. There is a yellow flag down on the field. We'll see if this is indeed a flag instead of the marker. A lot of discussion here. That always makes you nervous. <laughs> and I believe that was the final play of the first quarter. Interference on the kicking team, a violation of the halo. That's 10 yards, a penalty from the spot. The quarter expired, therefore we will have an untimed down, first and 10. So that will be an untimed down. Houston with a big advantage here, and you can see one of the gunners for the South Florida Bulls is nowhere near. That is not within, that's well outside the two yards. That, he, he is, uh, I mean, he's four yards away. That is an incredible call, uh, and that's a poor decision by that official. You see Jim Lev, he, he, <laughs> come on, plus he was being blocked. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. But anyway, everybody makes mistakes. I never said, I don't say that when I'm on the sideline, though, Al. I was going to say, I don't think you'd be so forgiving no, if you were in Jim Levin's right. shoes. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that next time I watch a Frankfurt football game. First down. Here's a look at Reynolds trying to find room left side of the South Florida Bulls. Pull him down. Kevin Verpale. It's a gain of three yards, and it's time now for the second quarter action as the South Florida Bulls own a 14-0 lead. Markwell Blackwell with the big pass play, and Markwell Blackwell has both touchdowns for the South Florida Bulls. And how about that pick by the senior, Kawika Mitchell? South Florida with the lead, 14-0 after one. Welcome back to Houston Al Keck along with Doug Graber here. Now, before the game, our director, Greg Blackburn, says, listen, I've got the best seats for you for this ball game. I want you to see where Greg Blackburn put us here. We're at the very top of the stadium. I think he got these seats from Bob Euchre. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe so. <laughs> but we're outdoors. It's a beautiful day, and it is a Tampa Bay kind of day. But we're in Houston, Texas. As Jim Levitt, South Florida Bulls lead 14-0 over the Houston Cougars. First play of the second quarter, Joffrey Reynolds trying to take it right up the middle, and Tavares Jerniak allows him to get very little yardage, and this will set up third down and long. You know, and I like what they do in the running game, Houston, because they run the inside zone, the outside zone, and the counter play, and those are their three plays, and they run them very, very well and execute them against all the fronts. Here's a look at Nick Eddy. So far today, 7 of 11, 85 yards, 37 of that on one pass play to Brandon Middleton. Third down and five. The Cougars trail at 14 nothing. Play clock winding down, down to five seconds. Eddie, quick drop. Looking deep the other way. The Bulls may have position. Had an opportunity for the pick. Maurice Tucker in coverage as they were all over Brandon Middleton. And, and credit this play as a nice job by Tucker right here, running uh, right with his boy. Almost had an interception. Or great, you know. But credit that play to the job of the South Florida safeties. They showed an eight-man front. Houston audible to that, and then they dropped out of it. So they're really giving them some problems with their pre-snap looks. And how about this? Fourth down and five, and the Cougars down 14-0. They're going for it. They're eight of 16 on fourth down this season from the shotgun. And they may have gotten it. South Florida may have been nailed. 
on the offsides penalty. Pass incomplete for Middleton. Chris Daly, uh, you know, got a jump. I don't know if he got back or not. It was very, very, very close at the uh, left defensive end here for South Florida. And I think that, that, and that, if it is stepped off, would be very close to first down yardage. It was fourth down and about five and a half. Yeah. Yep, that's the call. Excellent play by Dana Dimmel. No one. Well, now we're going to have a measurement here, I'm assuming, because I, th I think that they're going to be just a little bit short the way they spot. They are definitely going to be short. It's going to be fourth and, and really almost uh, one, a little bit less than one. South Florida has been penalized an average of 12 times per game. They're among the most penalized teams in all of college football. And Dana Dimmel in a situation like that did a great job of knowing his opponent and knowing how this South Florida defense loves to jump off at the snap, looking for an advantage there. And Houston very close to the first down here on fourth down. You know, and that's about the only thing critical you could say about this South Florida team. That's been a little bit of their Achilles heel this year. Uh, they have had a lot of penalties. But boy, they, you know, they play aggressively, though. It'll be fourth down and a yard. South Florida with the 14-0 lead. Quickly up to the line of scrimmage, the Houston Cougars. Here's Reynolds. Reynolds hit behind the line of scrimmage. Greg Walls and Kawika Mitchell with the stop on Reynolds. And he is shy of the first down. And how about the way the South Florida defense has slammed the door on the Houston Cougars? You know, and they, the key thing is they were ready to go. I mean, they, uh, Houston came up and they snapped it. South Florida was set and re very well prepared for that. Take a look at it here. Great penetration by Walls right there. Wow. Walls, Kawika Mitchell, and remember the penalties on that opportunity drive for the Houston Cougars. They come up short. And South Florida with the 14-0 lead has decent field position at the 28-yard line. Markwell Blackwell in a quarterback for the Bulls. Four wide receivers. Quick drop, quick pass. Huey Whitaker had it in his hands. Enough for a first down. Not able to hold on. Yeah, I'll tell you, that was another great throw by Blackwell. I mean, he just hit, absolutely hit him perfect here on the slant. Take a look at it. Boom, right there. And that's unusual because Whitaker's got great hands. He very rarely drops one. And he put it in a spot to where if Whitaker keeps his feet, he may still be going. Exactly. Second down and long. Once again, four wide receivers, two on each side. The running back is Crosley from blitz, the shotgun. Blitz. Here comes a blitz. Blackwell hangs in, and that is nearly picked off. It was a wide receiver screen. Houston did an excellent job of defensing it. And Delano Reed had an opportunity for the pick. He missed out on what could have been a touchdown for Houston. Yeah, and really, the, there's the key right there. He had a missed block on the outside corner, and he came in scot-free and read it. South Florida was very, very fortunate right there. Third down and long. South Florida had to punt the last time they had the football, but they were back up inside their five-yard line. This is going to be a three-man rush, it looks like, by Houston. Four wide receivers make it five receivers for the South Florida Bulls. All by himself in the backfield. Blackwell hits his tight end, Casey Cobb. He is shy of the first down. Blackwell pass complete to Casey Cobb. Casey Cobb on a crossing route, and that was a, uh, a you know, three-man rush. So they had eight people in coverage, and that's sometimes a tough on third down to fit one in there. This will set up fourth down and three, and for a second time in this contest, Devin Sanderson will punt. 42-yard average, had a 40-yard punt the last time he punted the football. Key Bell back to receive for the Houston Cougars. Excellent snap. This is into the wind at a very long punt. Bell gets away from one tackler, then goes down. It's a 44-yard punt. Javon Kamen, excellent special teams play in coverage for the South Florida Bulls. Great execution. Great punt, great snap. And Jim Levitt will take this lead. 14-0 over the Cougars of Houston very early in the second quarter. You can understand the South Florida Bulls if they're a little confused here because they look on the left and they see Delano Reed at number one. And then they look on the right 
and they see this <laughs> fine running back for the Houston Cougars, Joffrey Reynolds, at number one. So two number ones, two starters. There's always a number one on the field right now for Houston. Well, they're not too confused because Joffrey Reynolds is averaging .5 per rushing attempt so far. Play action with Reynolds. Eddie with time, puts it up, complete. Keevel over midfield, big gain on first down against this Bulls defense, 32 yards. That was an excellent, excellent uh, job by Keevel. Uh, take a look at it right here. He makes a great adjustment to the ball. They're running seam routes. What? Look at the adjustment he makes coming back outside to make that play. And uh, you know, he, the, and the quarterback threw the ball where the defender was not. Receiver made a great play for him. The Cougars, despite being down 14-0, have been able to move the football. They've had some big pass plays in this contest so far. Again, play of action. Pass complete. Very close to another first down. John Clark, the tight end on the reception for the Houston Cougars. So back-to-back -back passes, back-to-back -back first downs. Yeah, and this is the third time now they've run the, the uh, counter pass or naked. And uh, the receiver in the flat has been wide open every time. That's because South Florida is so aggressive on defense, and they're absolutely going to stop the run. Uh, if they shut the run entirely down like they have, uh, then uh, that's going to make that play action not as effective. At the 36, first and 10. Eddie straight back, going deep. Was looking for Robinson. Coverage by Hemingway. Yeah, and uh, again, South Florida was in an eight-man front, which is a little bit unusual for them, but in an eight-man front. And uh, the corner was in great shape outside, uh, forced the receiver inside. Here's the numbers on Eddie. Uh, boy, he's had two big plays thrown against the uh, South Florida defense so far. He's almost thrown for more yards today than he threw the entire ball game last year against the Bulls. He had a 139 yards passing against the Bulls last year in the loss of Raymond James Stadium. Second down and 10. Here's Reynolds, straight up the gut, gets away from one tackler, then he's pulled down from behind by Jerniak. Still a decent gain on second down. Yeah, and that time, of course, uh, South Florida was not in an eight-man front, and there's the danger, and that, boy, that was a great job of uh, Jerniak just holding on there, because they could have really gashed him. Sets up third and about uh, four and a half. Reynolds, the leading ball carrier in Conference USA, had 73 yards last season against the Bulls at Raymond James. This is third down and four. They have to get it over the 26-yard line. Reynolds again with an opening. Reynolds brought down by J.R. Reed inside the 20, 12-yard gain, and a third straight first down for the Houston Cougars. Great open field tackle by J.R. Reed because uh, now you got a heck of a back and you're one-on-one. -on -one. Take a look at it right there. And uh, he was all by his lonesome out there. Houston has been able to move the football inside the 20s or between the 20s. And they have a first down now at the 18-yard line. They're trailing at 14-0. South Florida has been pretty darn good in the red zone defense this year. Let's see if they can stop him here. Reynolds again, quick feet. This time the South Florida Bulls get him as he just gets over the line of scrimmage again. Jerniak and Courtney Davenport among the tacklers for the South Florida Bulls. You know, and this has really been a chess match, a back and forth between the offensive staff at Houston and the defensive staff at South Florida because South Florida's trying to get into that eight-man front to stop this uh, volatile a running attack. And, uh, and now what's happening is Houston has gashed him with a couple of uh, a big pass plays against that eight-man front. Reynolds is out, Anthony Evans, a freshman. Now the running back number six in the backfield. That's Clark in motion. Eddie, quick drop. Picked off by the Bulls again. This time this is Maurice Tucker, and Tucker, it's a battle of speed. He's and gone. Tucker with no He's flag gone. down. Now they're saying that he was out of bounds, and Jim Levitt cannot believe it. This was a 90-yard interception for a score. And Jim Levin has just given it to the official over there on the far sideline, and now there's a flag down at the 35-yard line. Either way, it appears that the Bulls have stopped this drive for Houston, and the Bulls will get the football back. 
Well, that was a three-step drop, and there was a, obviously a miscommunication between the quarterback and receiver, and a great job of Tucker reading it and being right there, Johnny, on the spot. On the return, the interception, an illegal block below the waist on the intercepting team, South Florida, 15 yards in the spot of the foul, first and 10. It was a light flag. Here's a look. Tucker, beautiful well, nice positioning. Nice job of stepping inside on the slant. Let's see if we can see the block below the waist. And I, let's see if he steps out of bounds. Oh, man, that's close. That's close. May have right there. May have right there, just barely. Either it, way. Yeah, it didn't matter. It was going to come back anyway, Al. The South Florida Bulls still stop this drive. And you talked about this red zone defense for the South Florida Bulls. There's a classic example. And they get the football back, and they have it. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. And they keep their 14-0 lead. Under pressure. Blackwell gets away from one man. Nearly hits Ryan Hearn. Let's see let's, what the officials the say. They're saying incomplete. And Hearn, a senior, tried to sell it. And that's what Blackwell is just so good at. I mean, you know, people come scot free on him, and he just has an amazing ability to shake him. Let's take a look at it here. Let's see if it got the hands underneath. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that's a good call. And the Bulls get right back to business. Quentin Callum, very little running room. You know, Al, the first uh, first couple drives, I mean, South Florida really came out firing offensively. And, and now a little bit of a lull here. They've got to kind of, kind of regain the momentum. Blackwell today, 6 of 11, 92 yards. The two touchdowns in the running department. A nine-yard run and then the one-yard sneak. There was a loss on that play. Third down and 11. Four wide receivers and the one running back in the, in the uh, backfield with Blackwell. Blackwell under pressure, going deep again. Hugh Smith just too long, and this will set a fourth down. So after the interception, South Florida not able to do anything with it. It'll be three and outs, and Devin Sanderson will punt the football away. Key Bell back to receive for the Houston Cougars. So you mentioned, Doug Graver, about how this team built up a 14-0 lead on its opening two drives. Since then, it has been all Houston. It really has, and Houston has clearly gained the uh, momentum in this football game, and now, of course, South Florida has to punt uh, into a pretty good wind here. Low snap. Sanderson into that win, and that might have hit a Houston Cougar on the foot. The official says no. It's a 39-yard punt, very close play. We've got 9.52 left to go before halftime, and the South Florida Bulls lead the Houston Cougars 14-0. Blue skies, 70-degree temperatures, but a very windy day. You see part of the beautiful skyline of Houston, Texas, smiling down upon Robertson Stadium. College football on a gorgeous Saturday. We see some of the South Florida contingent that's made the trip here to Houston, Texas. They're looking into the sunshine, and it's been nothing but sunshine for the South Florida Bulls as they lead it 14-0. Houston once again with excellent field position over midfield, ball mark at the 48-yard line. They drove it the last time they had the football, but the Bulls picked off the pass as Joffrey Reynolds. Feet still moving. Uh, now that should be a penalty right there. That is... Uh... And there's a little bit of bad blood now between these, uh, these two teams. No question about it. South Florida ripping pretty good uh, last year at Raymond James. And, of course, you know, uh, also Al Keck, uh, Houston kind of hired a couple coaches away. Look at the replay right here. You see the balance and the speed and the toughness that this Reynolds has. You see Maurice Jones is stepping up right there. He runs tough, boys, 225. But, you know, Houston hired uh, for Fernandez and Wolford a couple of uh, South Florida co- and really, frankly, just paid them a lot more. They lost him, and uh, plus an equipment guy. 
So, so there's, there, there's a little rivalry here. Second down and six. Here's Reynolds again. Whoa. Busts through the line of scrimmage. Has a first down near the 30-yard line. Maurice Jones, the stop. It's an 11-yard gain for Reynolds. What a block by number 40 for Houston, the fullback, uh, Tim uh, Feathers. <laughs> aggressive, aggressive fullback. Watch the fullback right here. Well, you just, just missed it a little bit. What a great block and a good block on Jones, and away he goes. You know, the one rap on uh, Joffrey Reynolds, uh, talking to some of the pro scouts here in the box, uh, he's had a little bit of a problem with fumbles. Houston has owned the stat as far as time of possession is concerned, but again, South Florida Bulls have owned the scoreboard. Here's a look at the freshman running back, Evans. He is brought down by Terrence Royal and Maurice Jones. Little gain on first down. Well, the South Florida Bulls in the first quarter, it's certainly bottled up Reynolds. Reynolds here in the second quarter has been able to find some yardage, but a key in all this has been the, the way that Houston has been able to pass the football. Yeah, absolutely. You hit it right on the button. Uh, South Florida wanted to play the eight-man fronts now. Uh, and Houston, with their passing game, was getting them out of those eight-man fronts. And uh, now you're, you've got to play real football without any help, without getting that eighth guy in the box. Second down and eight, Evans, the running back. Eddie on the pass, complete. That's good for another first down. On the reception for the Houston Cougars, it is Jonathan Pritchett. Yeah, they uh, motion him in here, fake the crack and come off of it with the pass. And a nice job of getting the football up for the big guy to go get it. So the Houston Cougars outside the red zone. The last time they had the football, they got it down inside the 18, and that's when Maurice Tucker picked off the pass. So South Florida has been able to keep that 14-0 lead. They got the 14 points on their opening two possessions. Here's Reynolds with room left side. And as he cuts, he slips. And that's a big break for the Bulls. And it looks to me, Al, like this uh, huge offensive front. And this is what happens. Uh, take a look at it here. This is the lead play, and they just bounce it all the way outside. But all these 300-pounders uh, have been leaning on uh, the South Florida defense here all day. And it looks like they're getting them worn down just a little bit. That time, Reynolds went behind his big left tackle, Chris Redding. He goes 6'4", 375 pounds. Two-yard gain, second down and eight. Reynolds again tries to go right up the middle, and the senior, Kawika Mitchell, pulls him down. What a play by Kawika Mitchell. What, what a heck of a player he is. And uh, he, he'll be playing in uh, two postseason games, uh, one in Hawaii and, of course, the Gridiron Classic uh, over in Orlando. <laughs> Sets up a big third down, Al, third and about nine. At the 20-yard line, the South Florida defense has been called upon to make some big plays here in the second quarter. A fumble. It was a bad snap. And again, some late, and there comes the flag, and that's an excellent call, and that should be on Houston. It's a late hit on Daly, Chris Daly. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty, down is fourth. Now, will this take the Houston Cougars out Watch of field goal Look range? Look at this snap. Watch the snap. <laughs> now, well, we talked about how big they are. <laughs> They're big, but <laughs> they somehow got to find room to fit the ball up through there. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of booty calls, but that is a booty call. <laughs> that is one big booty right there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> one more look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that would be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Now, South Florida has elected to take that penalty, which I totally agree with. Now, that gets them. Uh, and that takes out them out of field goal exactly, range. Exactly. Exactly. So they, this they have sets the up with them. fourth down and 26. Yep. And the Houston Cougars are going to call a timeout. You know, in talking about that last play, uh, we're kind of making fun of it, but I think the center didn't realize that the quarterback was in the shotgun. A little minor, little minor detail. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick Eddy will talk things over with the Houston coaching staff as the Houston Cougars trail 14-0. We've got 554 
When we come back, one more look. Booty call. South Florida with the lead at 14 0. There's a look at the center for the Houston Cougars. Rex had not. And if you saw that last play on the snap, he had not missed a meal in a while. <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you, he's a heck of a player. He is clearly the uh, best uh, offensive lineman that Houston has. He's a good one. He's the captain of this offense for the Houston Cougars. And now the Houston Cougars on fourth down and 26, they have decided to punt and try to play a game of field position here. Jimmy McClary will punt. And Ryan Hearn is back to receive. This is a punt with the win, and this will go into the end zone. So the South Florida Bulls will get the football at the 20 yard line. You know, that's a uh, key, was that from a coaching viewpoint, that that really uh, is kind of a lost start. But you, you just you just can't punt the ball up in the air there and uh, let that win take it in the end zone. You've got to try to work the ball to the sideline or do something. You can't just let South Florida have the ball in 20 yard line. It is a great Saturday for college football and coming up after this game. How about this matchup in the Pac-10? The Washington Huskies take on the Washington State Cougars. You want to you won't want to miss this one tonight coming up after this game on Fox Sports Net. At the 20 yard line from the shotgun Quentin Callum on the carry for the South Florida Bulls and again this Houston Cougar defense has been ready for this South Florida running game. They stuff it maybe a yard gain on the play. You know, and the interesting thing has been, I mean, uh, uh, Houston really uh, has had their problems defensively. Uh, they have a good offense. Boy, their defense is really playing well here today. Giving up 140 yards, rushing the football on an average, 274 yards against the pass. Houston showing blitz right here. Markwell Blackwell showing patience. They pull back, and it is a blitz. And coming in, we talked about Delano Bell. He came in from the left side, and he gets the sack of Markwell Blackwell. Very rarely do you get the Markwell Blackwell. Huge loss on the play. Well, that's the advantage of bringing a corner on a blitz because he's a good enough athlete, as you see right here, to not let uh, Blackwell slip the blitz. Reed on the blitz, and now the South Florida offense continues to go backwards. South Florida four of seven on third down, but many of those conversions came early in the ball game. Five receivers on third down in 20. Against a four-man rush, Blackwell hits Callum. Very little gain, maybe five yards, pass complete, and the Houston Cougars We'll get the football back, and once again, this South Florida defense is going to be called upon to stop the Houston Cougars. This will be the fourth consecutive possession that Houston has had with very good field position. Devin Sanderson standing at his two-yard line. Key Bell back to receive. Excellent snap. The big rush, and this is a beautiful punt. Beautiful, beautiful very punt. high into the wind. Key Bell takes it at the 34. Gets away from one tackler. Takes it up to the 40-yard line. A 50-yard punt by Devin Sanderson at a time when the Bulls truly needed a big punt. And that punt was in the wind, and he had great hang time on it. Uh, that, that really, really bailed uh, USF out right there. And excellent coverage downfield by Kamen. Uh, even though he didn't make the tackle, he's really the guy th that set it up. So again, the South Florida defense is going to be really tested. And remember, the strength of this Houston team is certainly this offense because they, they, they can run the football extremely well. And uh, as we've already witnessed, uh, Eddie can throw it pretty darn good, too. And they've got really three very good outside receivers. Ball marked at the 39, first and 10. Watch for play action now here on first and 10. Eight man front. Reynolds breaks it back right side. The South Florida Bulls are waiting. Yeah, and that was Kevin Verpale, and that's exactly why you want to be in the eight man front because he cut back the zone play. And of course, they couldn't block the safety. He was the eighth guy in the box. They can't block him. He makes the tackle. So you still get a four yard gain. But without the safety there, I mean, he, he's again going to get at least eight or nine. Second down and six. Repel coming into this game is a junior from Merritt Island had a case of the flu. Not 
Now again, let's take a look at the at, at South Florida here against the two back set. Watch the safeties up to the left, and here he comes down into the box. That's for Pale. And there he is making the tackle. But again, it's about a three or four yard gain. This will set up third down and short. And again, when we're talking about the box, we're talking about that area really from the uh, tight end, uh, inside the tight ends and within four yards of the line of scrimmage. That's what you uh, understand. That's uh, any time when you hear coaches talk about the box, that's what it is. Two yard gain, this will set up third down and two. 2.23 left to go before halftime. And again, Verpale, of course, is up in the box here and be alert for play action. Now he's going to come out of it. Now back into it. Reynolds, right side, tripped up, gets the first down, and he had a lot of green in front of him. You know, and again, the size of this Houston front, uh, you know, South Florida is, is, take a look at the replay right here, and again, they slanted, and a nice job of them picking it up, a good block by the fullback on Maurice Jones, and they bounce it right outside. But again, this huge front of Houston, and that's why you see uh, South Florida stunning some on defense, uh, because, uh, you know, they, they've got a tremendous uh, disadvantage size-wise. You're trying to utilize your quickness. 55 yards for Reynolds. Nearly all of those in the second quarter. Play action. Eddie. Oh, no, oh, no. Incomplete. At that time, uh, South Florida did a very, very nice job of taking away the post route uh, and the tight end in the flat with Verpale was right on him. Really no place to go with that football. And here comes the nickel defense now on the field uh, for South Florida. And that would be John Miller now coming in as a safety, and that will bump a repel up to the nickel position. Second down and 10. South Florida with a 14-0 lead, scored the 14 points on their opening two possessions. Three wide receivers. At the bottom of your screen, and Eddie calls a timeout. Play clock was winding down, and with 1.44 left to go before halftime, they want to find some points before half. And again, you know, the reason that he uh, had to take the timeout, he, he was going to audible there, and he realized he just absolutely did not have time uh, to get an audible on the clock. Coming up at halftime, we will talk to the athletic director at the University of South Florida, Leroy Selman. We'll ask him about the possibility of a bowl game. And we'll also take a look at the seniors on this ball club for the South Florida Bulls. 14 seniors playing what could be their final game in the green and gold. And make sure you uh, hang with us at halftime because I know all the South Florida fans want to get a report right from the boss, the athletic director, uh, Leroy Selman, in terms of exactly what's happening and what are the chances of South Florida getting a bowl bid. And here's a look at some of the differences between programs here in Conference USA. Look at this crowd today here at Houston. It's a gorgeous day. Football is king in the state of Texas. And this is a very small crowd. Yet at the University of South Florida, that's a program that's averaging a good 27,000 per game. Uh, Houston really, uh, really has to be disappointed to hear you got a quality opponent uh, coming in here, South Florida, and they really have to be disappointed in this crowd today in, in a facility right on campus here. Second out of 10, again from the shotgun. Eddie hangs in. He was looking for Key Bell. Coverage by Ron Hemingway. Passing complete, and he went down hard. Really did, and South Florida uh, brought the blitz. And Eddie is a big, strong uh, guy. He's 245 pounds. Uh, the, the big difference between he and Blackwell, of course, Blackwell is just much, much more uh, elusive and runs much better. Eddie is a classic drop back thrower. He's not going to beat you scramble. 134 left to go before halftime. Third down and 10. Boy, this defense, I'll tell you, if they can stop him again here, this has been an amazing four series in a row. Quick drop. Looking for Robinson. Pass incomplete. Eddie threw it one place. Yep. Robinson cut the other. That's one of those famous option routes. <laughs> and, uh, they, you know, they just couldn't get their heads together on the option. You either go inside or outside, and uh, they obviously did not see the same thing. Hey, give South Florida credit. That's a that's four 
great defensive series in a row. And all four times, the Houston Cougars had excellent field position, and the South Florida defense either had to come up with the turnover or slam the door on third down. And they certainly have done it because the offense now has really struggled here in the second quarter. McClary with the punt. Brian Fisher will let that go into the end zone. Great for the stats, very ineffective as far as field position is concerned for the Houston Cougars. And the South Florida Bulls will have 87 seconds left to go here in the first half. And they'll get the ball at the 20 yard line. Again, they scored on their first two possessions. They have been snuffed out ever since by this Houston Cougar defense. Yeah, they, they really have. And, and it's really put the defense in some terrible positions. And, uh, but they've answered the bell, and they're still hanging on to that 14 to nothing lead. You, you look at the, at the start of the game, you think maybe we're going to have a blowout. Not so fast. And one thing the South Florida Bulls want to do right here, they need to take care of the football. They cannot afford a turnover and give the Houston Cougars a golden opportunity here with 127 left to go before halftime. Vince Brewer, left side, trying to turn the corner, and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Well, I'd say this is uh, very, very surprising because uh, this has been the Achilles heel of the Houston program has been their defense, and yet today uh, they really have played very, very well against the South Florida offense. Farouk Adelkin, beautiful play, fighting off a blocker for that big loss, a loss of three yards, second down and 13. Clock counting, 58 seconds and counting. Brewer again, left side. Now over the original line of scrimmage, and the clock continues to wind down. Clock at 42 right now, and South Florida is not going to be in any hurry to run a play here because uh, you'd like not to have to uh, punt the football if you can help. If I'm Houston, I call a timeout here. I want to make sure that they have to punt the ball. Especially into, into this exactly. win. I think that's a mistake by the uh, Houston staff. Third down and eight. Three receivers, two men in the backfield from the shotgun. Brewer again. Brewer will take it over the 25-yard line. Down to the 27, and the clock is winding down. And now Houston will now call a timeout, timeout with timeout. eight seconds, but again, that doesn't give you much time. They could have had much more time and an opportunity to have the football on offense for a play or two. If I'm Houston right here, I, I don't even put a guy back to field the punt and bring a level. I mean, there's, you know, it's, uh, you almost have to, but yet it's funny, uh, you know, most staffs uh, really don't do that, and they're, uh, they're included because uh, a Bell is back there to uh, return the punt. And South Florida has had trouble with block punts. Sanderson has had two blocks so far this season, had a bad snap last week. And of course, the the, the uh, block punt early in the game uh, against Bowling Green was uh, not a way you want to start a football game. Well, Sanderson's been awful good, and the snaps have been good. Uh, the protection's got to be there, and he's got to get this one off. That's the key right here. Excellent snap. Sanderson able to get it away. It's a low punt heading for the sidelines. Excellent bounce. Bell takes it on the bounce, hit once, still going. And he's brought down over the 40-yard line. That also ate up most of the uh, clock time, and that's the end of the first half. A 43-yard punt by Devin Sanderson. South Florida Bulls with the lead, 14-0 over the Houston Cougars. The Bulls line here at the University of Houston, Robertson Stadium, where the South Florida Bulls scored on their opening two possessions, and they lead the Houston Cougars by a score of 14-0 at halftime. Check out these first-half stats. And again, it was all South Florida early on. From there, it was the Houston Cougars. South Florida with only four first downs in the first half, only 22 yards rushing, 98 yards passing, and the Houston Cougars able to roll up 191 yards of offense on this South Florida defense. But the two turnovers, South Florida especially effective on third down in stopping Houston. And even though the Houston Cougars own time of possession, the South Florida Bulls own the lead at halftime. And you heard Jim Levitt, he wants to get some of that momentum back. He said his football team did not play very well in the second quarter. And his South Florida Bulls will get the football from Dana Demmel and the Houston Cougars to open things up here in the third quarter. 14-0.
the South Florida Bulls on the lead. Back to receive for the South Florida Bulls. It will be Hugh Smith. And quick Callum. And this will go into the end zone, and the South Florida Bulls will get the ball at the 20-yard line. First and 10 from there. South Florida with the lead at 14-0. Here's a look now at the next tell quarterback comparison. Markwell Blackwell, 98 yards passing, has the two touchdowns on the ground. Nick Eddy has been able to move the football for the Houston Cougars. But again, the two interceptions have really stopped the offense for the Houston Cougars. And South Florida, despite giving up the yards, have really thrown a blanket, a wet blanket, over this Houston offense. So South Florida has the football first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Blackwell on the rollout. Complete Huey Whitaker. Good gain on first down for the South Florida Bulls. Gain of seven yards on the play. And so South Florida coming right out, going to the air. Blackwell on the pass. Whitaker with his first catch today along the sidelines. Gain of eight yards on the play. Second down and two. You know, this is a defense that's given up an average of 415 yards a game. So they, they've, they've struggled. Vince Brewer against the blitz up close to first down yardage. Maybe shy, and this will second set up third down in short. In fact, it's third down and about a yard and a half. Here's the key number. Uh, South Florida is averaging 1.4 per rush offensively. South Florida was with only 22 yards rushing in the first half. To the air, that is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. So another three and out for the South Florida Bulls offensively. Remember, only four first downs in the first half for South Florida, yet they continue to cling to that 14-0 lead. And this Houston sideline, uh, you can just see uh, the, you know, the, the momentum coming, and they have some real enthusiasm now going on that sideline. South Florida really has to be careful here. Devin Sanderson, very busy in the second quarter, had to punt several times in the second quarter. Came up with key punts. Again, this into the win, and Bell will call for a fair catch at the 36-yard line, so once again, Excellent field position for the Houston Cougars. Again, they've been able to move the football between the 20s, a 35-yard punt, but nothing to show for it on the scoreboard because the South Florida defense has been able to slam the door. Yeah, and here's the, here's the number uh, that we've been looking for. The South Florida defense uh, is giving Houston an average of 2.4 per rush, way, way below their season average. Uh, they've gashed him with some passes, but they've done a really an outstanding job of shutting down the potent Houston running game. 191 yards of offense in the first half for the Houston group. Play action. Eddie trying to roll away from trouble. Knocked out of bounds by Kawika Mitchell and Greg Walls. And again, I, I think, if, to my recollection, that's the sixth time now that on first and 10 they have come with the play action. And that's just what we talked about, Al. That was the naked, and boy, South Florida had every receiver shut down coming across the field. No place to go with the football. Take a look at it right here. I mean, he's got no place to go. The coverage is just terrific, terrific down the field. Nice job of Greg Walls chasing him out of bounds. Second down and 10 for the Houston Cougars. Joffrey Reynolds, the leading ball carrier in Conference USA, 55 yards first half. Pump fake, Eddie looking deep. Robinson goes down, and here comes a flood. Yeah, and, and uh, Dewan Brown did the right thing because they ran a uh, hitch and go, and uh, they had him beat, and that's a, exactly the way I always coached him. Get him down. If you've got to tackle him, get him down. Do not give him a touchdown. And he did a good job there. Aggressive. And remember now, they picked Matt off a slant early. On the defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, first and 10. That'll be the fifth penalty today against the South Florida Bulls. They come in averaging 12 per contest. And again, we're seeing so many three-step drops uh, from Houston because South Florida has been in a lot of eight-man fronts as they were right there. That puts you in a three-deep zone. The way to attack a three-deep, one of the ways is to run those quick three-step drops. Ball marked at midfield. Reynolds right up the middle. South Florida's defense ready. And again, that was Kevin Verpale very, very late 
coming up. Uh, you watch it right here to the right of your screen. You'll see Verpale coming right there, number 17. That's the uh, safety, the strong safety, getting into the front to create that eight-man front. There's Jerniak leaving the ball game. He's a senior out of Orlando. He's played a fine ball game. Also in on that tackle, second down and eight. From the 47, Reynolds in the backfield. Three wide receivers at the bottom of your screen. Eddie from the shotgun, he hands off to Reynolds, and Reynolds is hit immediately. Walls and the very young freshman, Terrence Royal, in on the tackle for the South Florida Bulls. Boy, and these defensive ends uh, in this uh, program are something. You've got Terrence Royal, Sharon Pearson, of course they're gonna lose, uh, Chris Daly, the senior, Tim Jones, some outstanding, outstanding young talent at defensive end. Houston, three of 10 on third down in the first half. And this is third down and seven. Four wide receiver set. Eddie, against the blitz, tried to throw it out to Reynolds, and Reynolds looked like he wanted no part of the football. Yeah, and that's the one thing that's really going to hurt Reynolds in terms of pro football. His hands are very average, and of course, the biggest problem, he has not done it today, but he has been known as a fumbler. Look at it right here. They're trying to set up the screen, and uh, just, uh, you know, looking down the field, not looking at the football. That's a typical mistake on the screen. McClary into punt. Brian Fisher back to receive. He's standing at his 10-yard line. South Florida has not seen anything resembling good field position since the first quarter. And this will go into the end zone, and the South Florida Bulls will take the ball at the 20-yard line, leading 14-0, their second possession here in the second half. 12-26, left to go in the third, and the Bulls lead it 14-0 over the Cougars of Houston. The South Florida contingent very quiet right now. They had plenty to cheer about in the first quarter, but since then, it's been very quiet for the South Florida Bulls, but they still own the lead on the scoreboard at 14-0. South Florida three and out the last time they had the football, and Markwell Blackwell will try to get this offense jump-started. Yeah, and, and it's really time. You know, that they've been uh, struggling uh, really since uh, late in the first quarter. Uh, they need to get some first downs and get some rest in their defense at least. Houston showing blitz. Blackwell changing the play. Ten seconds on the play clock. Houston pulls back. Blackwell, quick pass. Again, Huey Whitaker had it in his hands, not able to hold on. That could have been a first down. Uh, just a little bit low on the throw here, but certainly, certainly, I think, a catchable ball. And that was the audible to the blitz, the three-step slant. There's the throw right there. A little bit behind him, but still, you know, you got to make some plays like that. You got to help your quarterback out. The swing pass to the wide receiver, Hugh Smith. Hugh Smith takes it over the 25-yard line on second down. And he's brought down by Adrian Lee. And you know, somewhat of a factor in this uh, is South Florida now in the second and third quarter have been going into the wind here. And here South Florida has run another wide receiver on the field, so now they got four wide receivers matched up against the nickel. And the running back, Vince Brewer, is in the slot. Third down, third and four. South Florida wants to avoid another three and out. Quick drop, Blackwell under pressure. Got He's got down. room, left side has the first down and much more to the 40 yard line. And that is their first first down since the opening quarter. And again, that is all, all by Blackwell because I really the worst thing, watch it, here comes the blitz right here. And again, uh, great job of Blackwell escaping. He's so smooth and fluid, knows what he needs for the first down, gets it, steps out of bounds. Heads up play by the senior. And the Bulls are quickly up to the line of scrimmage at the 38-yard line. Their first first down since very early in the ball game. They lead it 14-0. Quick pass, Ryan Hearn with blocking. Hearn with a flag down. This may be against Huey Whitaker. Hearn was close to another first down, but this may be coming back. Yeah, you're going to get a block in the back here on Huey Whitaker, and it's too bad because, again, now the offense is starting to get a chance and jump start themselves, and you get a key penalty on first and 10. Boy, Jim Levitt's right out on the field. <laughs> And let's see if we can catch it right here. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what that, that. <laughs> I, I, I totally do not agree with that call. 
Now, I, I, I don't want to remind you anything, Coach, but early in the first half, you said they're only human. Yeah, I know. They're only human, but, uh, you know, humanity runs out after a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's the type of human that they are that makes you upset. Yeah, huh? right. I got you. Four re uh, wide receivers for the South Florida Bulls. First down against the Blitz. Wide receiver screen. Eskra can't get away from Honick Milligan. Well, Hanuk Milligan is a, he's a tough, hard-nosed, hard-nosed football player. 6'3", 215, senior. He's a good one. And again, setting up the uh, outside screen, and he beats the block. Clean. Well, he's so strong. I mean, he just throws people around because uh, you know, is no little guy himself. Now, here comes the, look at the wide receivers here. This is called, this is a double stack. Okay, and it's really designed to beat man-to-man -man and to, to cause some problems matchup-wise. Let's see what we get out of it. Here's this will be second down and 20. Ball marked at the 28-yard line. Blackwell with time. Steps up, finds his running back, Brewer. Big hit again. That's right. That's a good play by Blackwell. You, you, you get about six yards, and now, you know, I mean, third and 20 is impossible. Now you got third and about uh, 13, and you got a much better chance of converting here. Damian West on the tackle for the Houston Cougars. Two backs in the backfield. Third down, 13. Blackwell against pressure. Got a chance here. Blackwell looking over the middle. Iskra for the first down. Iskra at the 40-yard line. A big game on third down and 13. The South Florida Bulls pull out that 24-yard play for the first down. Back-to-back -back first downs for the first time since the first quarter. And again, that's all Blackwell. His mobility is truly and totally what set this play up. And a nice, tough catch in traffic by Iskra, the young guy out of Clearwater Central Catholic. At the 40, the South Florida offense on the move for the first time since early in the ball game. They lead it at 14-0. The shotgun, Vince Brewer, hit hard by Damian West. Make that Matt Shermer the tackle for the Houston Cougars. You know, and this spread the field offense uh, and no huddle offense uh, that South Florida runs. The mobility of the quarterback is such a key issue in this offense. And boy, Blackwell has sure got it. Gain of one yard on the play, second down to nine. Blackwell has hit five in a row. This is an audible from the sideline. Rod Smith is signaling the audible from the sideline. And now uh, Barkwell is giving it to everybody else on the offense. Five seconds on the play clock. Down to four seconds on the play clock. Two seconds. They are able to get it off. Barely beat the clock. Blackwell under pressure. How does he get away wow. from that? Gets wow. it. They block. Blackwell open, looking he's deep. Got he's got him. Smith. Touchdown, South Florida. 39 yards on the touchdown. Blackwell probably ran close to 20 yards, and the seniors hook up in what could be their final regular season performance. And again, it's all the mobility of Black. Watch this spin move right here and going to the back. Oh, what a move, and can he throw on the run? And Smith was coming free, and he spotted it. What a throw. Wow. 39 yards, Blackwell to Hugh Smith. Blackwell has had a hand in all three touchdowns. Point after try by Gramatica pulls it left, so the point after is no good. But it's a nine play, 80 yard drive, three minutes, 42 seconds. Keep an eye on number two. He'll find the end zone, 20 nothing. The Bulls lead Houston. Hugh Smith, the senior, four catches today, 107 yards, and how about this touchdown catch? 39 yards from Markwell Blackwell, and if there was ever a team that needed a spark right now, it is South Florida. Yeah, and all set 
again set up again by the mobility of Blackwell. That was a blitz. He sp spun out of it to the weak side. They did not contain him, and that's exactly what this Houston defensive staff uh, was worried about it. And they sure got hit by it right there. How about the South Florida offense? Dormant, really, Al, for a quarter and a half, and then convert a third and 13, and away they go. What a drive. Justin Geisler with the kick. Rayshon Pope back to receive, and this is two yards deep. Pope will bring it out. Looking for blocking, and the South Florida Bulls get him just over the 10 yard line. He fights his way to the 15, but excellent coverage by the South Florida Bulls. Look at this drive nine plays, 80 yards. Three minutes, 42 seconds. The scoring pass, 39 yards. Markwell Blackwell to Hugh Smith. And that was a great uh, kickoff by Geisler into the wind, and he put it two yards deep in the end zone. And again, with all the South Florida speed, uh, great coverage on the kickoff, poor field position starting for Houston. Houston uh, counters now with two tight ends. This has been their play action and run uh, personnel grouping. Nick Eddy, the quarterback for the Houston Cougars, been able to move this offense, but has not found the end zone. Reynolds hit hard. Joffrey Reynolds carries. Kawika Mitchell Cougars. among the tacklers for the South Florida Bulls. By and Terrence Royal in on, on that hit as well. And again, the South Florida countered right the off the bat the clock, with that eight man front. Midday, and that has really given Houston some problems all day. Two yard gain on the play, Houston second down and eight. The South Florida defense has been called upon throughout this ball game, even though they were working with the lead. They had some very short fields, but the Bulls did a great job of taking care of their red zone and the end zone. 14, uh, make that 20 nothing. the Bulls with the lead. Eddie trying to set up the screen pass, and he finds his tight end, and there's all kinds of running room. Kevin Verpale on the tackle of Jarrett Pritchett, and that is a huge game. 19 yards, and, uh, first down for Houston. Yep, and, and in fact, I asked the South Florida staff if they had seen this play from them. That's the delayed backside screen away from the counter action, and that is a real problem against eight-man fronts. And the tight end really blocked, and it was way delayed coming out, and, uh, and uh, you knew that was coming at some point or the other. Ball marked at the 42, first down for the Houston Cougars. Eddie pump fake, going deep. Intercepted wow. by J.R. Reed. He does it with one hand. Five interceptions on the season for J.R. Reed. You know, Houston tried to get that matchup. They put the wide receiver at tight end and then shifted him out to try to get a matchup with the safety. They got it, but they got more than they uh, bargained here with J.R. Reed. What a great play by J.R. Reed. He is unbelievable. What a great year he's had. He and Verpail right there have been really, really good at the safety spots for South Florida. Five interceptions on the season now for J.R. Reed. And the South Florida Bulls, have we said this throughout the day, once again, their defense has slammed the door on this Houston Cougar offense. Now, that's the one great thing. I mean, you're always going to have some bad days offensively, but you can be pretty darn consistent on defense, and they've done it all year. Blackwell, 13 of 21 for 281 yards. Now, we should mention, in those 21 passes, he has now gone 220 passes without throwing a pick. That, that puts him a third on the all-time list uh, in NCAA history of consecutive passes uh, without an interception. And uh, interestingly enough, you know who leads uh, that category? A gentleman by that uh, Buccaneer fans know all too well, Trent Dilfer. He threw an amazing 241 straight without an interception uh, while he was at Fresno State. And some Buck fans will claim he made up for it <laughs> as a pro. <laughs> I think Trent would probably hey, tell you that, that as well. That was cruel. That was cruel. <laughs> no, Trent and I go way back. He's a great guy. I love Trent Dilfer. He's a stand-up He's got a guy. Super Bowl victory yes, and a Super does. Bowl ring. It doesn't matter what You're I say right. or what anybody else says. He's a good one. Prince Brewer trying to find some running room over the 20-yard line to the 22. <laughs> Okay, now let's see if we can uh, get a couple first downs now, a couple series in a row here. This would really, really help the defense out. 
Okay, now we're looking at, we have a four wide receiver set in there with the triple to the offense's left as you look at it, up to the top of your screen. It's third down and six. Five on the play clock. Blackwell, quick drop. Elgin Hicks, first down, like taking candy from a baby. What a read, what a read on the blitz, and what a great throw on the out cut by Blackwell. He, I'll tell you what, what a career he's had here. And of course, Elgin Hicks is a transfer uh, from Florida. Del uh, Delano throw. Reed, there's not much he can do. Look at that throw. I mean, Look at all that room he had, too. Corner it ha is inside, it's a blitz. The corners has to play inside position, unstoppable with timing like that. 32-yard line, first down and 10. Houston coming in, rated 111 against the pass. Vince Brewer nailed behind the line of scrimmage. And while the Houston Cougars have had trouble against the pass, they've come in today and played very well against this running game of the South Florida Bulls. The Bulls were held, again, 22 yards rushing in the first half. Yeah, and they just uh, have not been able to dent this uh, Houston front uh, running the football, and I know that's very disappointing uh, to the offensive staff, to Mike Hobby and, uh, and Rod and the whole offensive staff, Greg Fry, the offensive line coach as well. A loss of one on that play, second down and 11. Again, the Bulls lead it at 20 to nothing, 540 and counting in the third quarter. Five on the play clock. South Florida knows that the clock is its friend right now, even in the third quarter. Quick drop, pass complete, Hicks again, Hicks fighting his way, trying to get the first down yardage, but an excellent gain on second down and 11. This is gonna be close, it depends on the spot, and again, uh, boy, nice job by Blackwell, he's got him wide open, I mean, he reads the coverage, he gets the ball out fast. And they'll call that a first down. How about Elgin Hicks? You're talking third and fourth effort to get the first down there. You see the time remaining in the third and the scoreboard on the side of the South Florida Bulls. Rollout, right side. Chris Iskra completes at the 45. Gain of three on first down. You know, in that sprint out, I can't emphasize this enough. The sprint out that South Florida runs is so much of in the spread offense that you really have to have an athletic quarterback uh, that can make that throw on the run, and they've certainly got the guy in Markwell Blackwell. The seniors really, really stepped it up big today for this offensive football team. No question about that. Second down, seven. South Florida on the move here with 514. Left to go in the third quarter. South Florida with the lead, 20 to nothing. How about that pass? Blackwell, 39 yards to Hugh Smith the last time the Bulls had the football. Blackwell, all kinds of time, has another receiver for a first down. Gutsy catch in traffic by Dustin Bell. Excuse me, I'm sorry. That is a gentleman that's not even on the depth chart for the South Florida Bulls. It was a number seven. Well, we know number seven is Santiago Gramatica. <laughs> And that ain't Santiago. No, it isn't. I don't think. That is Sean King's little brother. The well, little brother just made a big play. Good for him. Blackwell against the blitz. Going deep. Hugh Smith just out of reach. Again, that's a great read by Smith and Blackwell. They certainly were on the same page, had a full blitz, uh, just a little bit mistiming on the throw, but boy, they certainly uh, attacked it the correct way. Again, just a, he got bumped a little bit at the line of scrimmage, which threw the timing just off slightly. And again, a gutsy first down catch for the first down by Cedric King from Gibbs High in St. Pete, the little brother of Sean King. Made a big play there to get the Bulls over midfield. Another blitz, another out cut. Just a little bit high on that one. He threw that all the way across the field from the left Passing hash all the way to the right, right sideline. Uh, just a little Third bit high, just a little bit anxious to make that throw. And we should make the point here that the Bulls are finally able to move the football with their passing game into the wind. They're into the wind of this right. quarter. This is quite a strong win. And it certainly affected the Bulls earlier in the ball game. But Blackwell, now with 7 of 13 on third down, has been able to figure that tricky wind out. And the key thing here is the defense is resting on the sideline. Third down and 10 from the shotgun. 
Blackwell feeling Got the pressure. Got him wide open. Ryan Hearn, Hearn over the 30-yard line, and the Bulls are on the move again with yet another first down. Excellent gain. 19 yards and the Bulls are marching. And yet another blitz by Houston. And this is exactly what you want to catch him. And here comes the blitz and the crossing routes are the toughest to cover. And he had a wide open coming across the field. Nice job of Mike Hobby and the offensive staff on that call because they had run three blitzes in a row. At the 27, first and 10, the South Florida Bulls lead it 20 to nothing. They've gone 56 yards on this drive so far, and again, it's been a long drive. Started out at their own 17. 10 seconds on the play clock. Three wide receivers at the top of your screen. Blackwell, quick pass, Whitaker. Whitaker Whoa, on the moto, moves away. Whitaker going for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the South Florida Bulls. 27 yards, and the Bulls run their lead to 26 0. That is a 6'5, 225 pound receiver, and watch him make a move inside and break it back outside. Wow, and the strength of him breaking that tackle. And that's what you need in this offense. You need wide receivers that can become running backs. 83 yards, 11 plays. Whitaker, as the South Florida Bulls. Missed a point after earlier. They're going to go for two here, leading 26 0, 404. Left to go in the third. Now, as a coach, you have a chart Absolutely. that tells you whether or not you should go for two or go for one in a situation like yeah, this. And the, and the chart clearly says go for two right here. No question about that. Five receivers for the South Florida Bulls. Watch for quarterback draw. Nope. Blackwell trying to hit Quentin Callum too hard and the pass is incomplete the drive for two no good and the south florida bulls will keep the lead at 26 nothing 404 left to go in the third and the bulls closing in on win number nine on the season huey whitaker taking a breather after going 27 yards on the touchdown 26 nothing the south florida bulls are leading at houston Join Tom Arnold and his celebrity panel to talk about what matters most, sports, the best damn sports show, period. Unscripted insanity at its best, weeknights at 10, right here on Fox Sportsnet. You know, Al, if my figures are correct, uh, we know that uh, Markwell Blackwell now has passed up Jack Trudeau from Illinois on that the consecutive throws without interception, and I think he needs uh, two more to become number two behind Trent Dilfer in the pass up Matt uh, Blunden played at Virginia. The kickoff into the wind. Pope will take it inside the 10. There's a block in the back, nothing called. There and comes here a comes a flag and the Houston Cougars having trouble on the return here. Yeah, Johnny Jones, number 35, that clearly was blocked in the back. And a uh, nice job of the officials of spotting that. I think he signaled holding. I don't, I don't, maybe they saw something else, but that was pretty clearly a block in the back. Jim Levitt, <laughs> did you see the face there? I mean, he's up 26 nothing in the third. Hey, hey, that guy could be up 70 to nothing, and you would not see his intensity waver one iota. He was mad last week when he got doused with some water when there was six seconds to go. He said, hey, this game is still going on. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the return. There's the clip right there on, uh, on Jones. And apparently that was, uh, they either missed the signal or something because that was clearly what the penalty was. First and 10 for the Cougars. The, the uh, ball mark is inside the 10 yard line at the eight. Eddie, quick drop, a little Got him fake. again. Oh, and that's picked that's off Jay Jay Ray. His second pick today, six on the season. Looking for blocking, there is a flag down. Reed headed for the end zone. Will they signal a touchdown? They do, but again, a flag is down. Yeah, and I think that was either a clip or a hold. Uh, they're gonna bring that back, but it's still gonna be first and 10 South Florida. That was the hitch and go again. They beat the corner again, but J.R. Reed, all the way from the middle of the field at the free safety spot, what range and what a play for J.R. Reed out of Hillsboro High School. And I'll tell you what, now that is his uh, sixth interception of the year. Second today. And the fourth overall by the South Florida Bulls today. And again, he just did a great job of playing King Griffey back there. Played center field, took it away. 
and let's see how this all shakes out. Either way, the Bulls will get the football back. Let's see if they get a touchdown out of the deal. I don't believe so. We have fouls off the play of an illegal block in the back on the return of the intercept. We have a personal foul on the offensive team with Houston on the return. Okay, well, we're gonna get this all sorted out. Double penalty. He's gonna come over now and explain it to, uh, to Coach Levitt. Beautiful job by Reed of anticip anticipating the play, reading the play. He's, uh, he, he is really, really good uh, back there at that safety spot. And he has been, even as a freshman, you can see the ability he had and uh, great young man. And I'll tell you, he, with he and uh, Kevin Verpale coming back at safety next year, they'll both be seniors next year. And there they are right there together. And uh, that is an outstanding pair of safeties for South Florida. South Florida will get the football at the 30-yard line. Once again, four interceptions today by these Bulls defense. Kawika Mitchell got things started very early in the ballgame with the pick. Reed has two. Maurice Tucker has one. First and ten for Markwell Blackwell in the Bulls. They're now leading 26-0. Blackwell, quick pass. Iskra on the cut. He cuts it back. Iskra brought down near the five-yard line. Excellent game. 15 yards. First and goal from the five. And again, that was a full-scale blitz. Uh, by Houston, excellent protection on the sprint out. Did a nice job of picking it up here, as you see right here. Straight gap protection. Nice throw to Iskra. Good job. A good, good inside move. I hope the board people are paying attention, uh, Mr. Keck. 25 yards on the gain, excuse me. And you would think that with the way the Bulls are rolling up this score, some bull has to take notice of a team that's nine and two blackwell touchdown. strolling into the touchdown his third touchdown today what a year and what a career that markwell blackwell has had he has really been amazing and a solid young man his feet there he's got his feet well right on the ground he knows exactly what he's doing he studies the game uh he has just been terrific 30 yards, two plays, 25 seconds after the pick by J.R. Reed, and Gramatica will try to add the point after. And that is no good. So wow. Gramatica has missed a pair of point afters. And South Florida will keep the lead at 32-0. And how about the senior going over to the young kicker, Blackwell, you can see how he's a leader yep. in so many different ways. Just telling him to hang in. We've got the lead at 32-0. Don't beat yourself up. And Blackwell makes it look easy on the five-yard touchdown run. He now has three touchdown runs and two touchdown passes. Yeah, you know, and uh, I learned a long time ago in coaching that when a guy, when he's running like that, it looks like he's hardly moving, that means he's moving. All the, the guys that can really run are so fluid and they make it look so easy. And Al, if our figures are correct, Marquell is now second on the all-time list of consecutive throws without an interception uh, to Trent Vilfer, who has 271. Now, Marquell would need a bowl game opportunity uh, to have a chance to pass, of course, out where, you know, we're assuming he's not gonna throw a pick today. But what a career for that young man right there. Homegrown product here in the uh, St. Pete, Tampa area. Terrific young man. 3-18, still left to go in the third quarter. Justin Geisler will kick off for the South Florida Bulls as they again led 14-0 at halftime, and they've rolled it up here in the third quarter. Pope will take it inside the five. Pope trying to the find this blocking, and the Bulls pull him down. Chris Iskra, who's done so many things today, makes a tackle on special teams, a 16-yard return. Again, two plays, 30 yards, 25 seconds, all set up by the pick by J.R. Reed from Hillsboro High in Tampa. You know, and Alan, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of the NCAA and the bowl structure, uh, and I've been there. You know, I, we qualified for two bowls uh, when I was the head coach at Rutgers, and in a very similar situation as this, did not get bowl bids. And, uh, but this team is so deserving, and this coaching staff is so deserving. Uh, I, I really uh, hope that they get that opportunity. 
The Bulls lead it 32 nothing. Still plenty of time left to go here in the third. Eddie's thrown four picks today. Middleton on the reception. Close to first down yardage. In a situation like this, now you got three Eddie's minutes left to go in the, third, the final regular season game for your seniors, and you have a guy like Blackwell that, again, has run for three touchdowns. He's thrown for two. Do you keep him in the ball game in a situation like this, or do you take him out, let your young players in, even though this could be his final game in a Bulls uniform? I think you have to let him play at least the midway through the fourth quarter, Al. That's how I would feel, at least uh, as a coach. The shotgun. Eddie with time, and a flag is down in the backfield of the Houston Cougars. I, mean, that was, uh, I, I think that uh, Sherrod Pearson was really bringing it from outside, and I think he drew a hold. In fact, I know he did. Yeah, and really, you hate to say this, but if you're South Florida, you, you have to get the attention of some of these bowl committees. You've got to let your guys stay on the field and keep playing. Holding on the offense, the 10 yard penalty from the previous spot remains first down. Let's take a look and see if we can see it here. From the right, there's the, boy, that's a full go tackle on Sharon Pearson. He made a great inside move. You know, when, when you're a speed rusher and you learn how to make that inside move, now you really create problems for the offensive tackles. First down and 20 at the 20 yard line for the Houston Cougars. Joffrey Reynolds, the lone running back, play action. Eddie on the rollout, under pressure, and they're looking for Reynolds. Reynolds on the catch. He takes it over midfield, still running, and it takes J.R. Reed with the short tackle to pull him down, but a huge gain, 33 yards. On first and 20, that is good for the first down. You know, and, and again, uh, when you're playing uh, such aggressive defense and, and running to the football like South Florida does, uh, that's the one area where you're going to possibly give some plays are on these long throwbacks. Now, that's the second time they've been hit today. Wide open coming down the sideline. Missed tackle here, but boy, there's the J.R. Reed. He just doesn't miss. From the 46, first and 10 for the Houston Cougars, 230. And counting left to go in the third. South Florida has exploded here in the third quarter, leading 32 0. High snap. Evans able to keep the feet moving. He's down near the 40 yard line. Maurice Jones. Well, the stop a, for South Florida. There's a lot of chippy stuff uh, going on after the play that the officials are going to have to uh, get a handle on uh, because you just can't allow that to go on. And of course, uh, now Houston is coming with the no huddle offense. There's a lot of pushing and shoving after the play. And uh, you just, they've got to put a stop to that. Three receivers at the top of your screen. And he's trying to find one of them. He does. Key Bell over to the 30, down near the 30. Jones, a linebacker with the stop for the South Florida Bulls. And uh, now South Florida is really not uh, done much blitzing up to this point at all. But I, I would look. Uh, for the defensive staff uh, to start bringing it here pretty quick uh, between Wally Burnham and Rick Kravitz. I would expect to see some blitzes here coming. At and here 31. it comes. Here it comes right there. Evans, the freshman, taking it right up the gut. And that's Johnny Jones, the number 35 in the game round. He's really coming on. Uh, uh, you know, at the latter stages of this season, a 6'2", 195-pound freshman safety from Sarasota. Five-year game, Kawika Mitchell, the tackle for the South Florida Bulls. You got John Miller in the game now as well. Eddie. Incomplete. Was looking for Evans. And that was Johnny Jones that made the uh, contact. Okay, that sets up third and five now. Boy, don't you, don't you know that they would love, love to get a shutout right here uh, on the road at Houston. Sidney Simpson, number one for South Florida, is an hour in the game, young man out of uh, Popka. Third down and five. At the 26, Eddie for drop, was looking for Tyson, Johnny Tyson. Tyson was open, and it was a poor pass. Either that or a poor route, either way, incomplete. Uh, 
Fourth down, they're bringing a Brandon Middleton, another receiver in, so obviously they're gonna go for it here. Down 32 nothing. What a wait left to go in the third. Fourth down and five. The South Florida defense is held throughout. Can they do it again? Eddie, complete. This time he finds Robinson. Robinson fighting his way inside the 10-yard line. Good for the first down. Many of these young kids in the ballgame now for the South Florida Bulls defense. Giving up yardage. They've been able to hold the Cougars out of the end zone throughout. Can they do it again? Now, inside the 10-yard line. So delayed blitz. And here's the weakness. There's the, uh, the the hitch outside, and just uh, especially for where you're at on the field, uh, just a little bit too soft in the coverage by uh, Hemingway. And South Florida calls a timeout, and Jim Levitt is out on the field with that defense, and he is not pleased with this drive at all. And uh, if their intensity is starting to uh, drop off a little bit, he'll get it cranking again. 58 seconds left to go in the third. The South Florida Bulls. Led 14-0 at halftime, and they have followed with touchdown passes. Blackwell, 39 yards to Hugh Smith. Blackwell, a 27-yard pass to Huey Whitaker. And then Blackwell on the five-yard run, 32-0, the Bulls lead. Now, you've never seen a pregame show like this one. Red Iron greats, devoted football fans, talk prediction, uh, predictions, they talk Super Bowl, and they talk about all the latest news in the NFL. It's set for tonight, 10-15, on the NFL show, right here on Fox Sports Net. What a great job of coaching by this defensive staff. Uh, Rich Rachel, my old assistant, Earl Lane at the defensive line, Rick Kravitz, Wally Burnham have done a terrific job this year. But they've played excellent red zone defense all year, uh, but they got a challenge right here now. First and goal at the eight yard line. Reynolds tries to cut back, keeps the feet going. But he's brought down by the Bulls' defense. That was Maurice Jones uh, that made that hit. Jared Reed also in on the tackle for the South Florida Bulls. You know, up 32 to nothing, and it's just it's natural for your intensity on defense to maybe just start to slip a little bit. Uh, but this will certainly get your attention, this drive right here. 234 yards in the air, but again, the four picks. Certainly a key in this ball. Wide game. open. Wide open. Middleton waltzes in for the touchdown. The first score today for the Houston Cougars. And again, uh, that, that's really a mistake in coverage because, uh, it, and certainly at this point on the field, uh, you know, you, You've got to tighten down your coverage. You, you, you know, you're on your own seven yard line. There's no sense of covering the back of the end line in the end zone. 81 yards, 10 plays, two minutes, 44 seconds. That was too easy, and that's exactly what Jim Levitt is going to tell him. Here they're going to go for two. Three wide receivers, top of your screen. Eddie, quick drop. Knocked away Ron Hemingway. So that pass, no good, and the Bulls lead it at 32-6. 23 seconds still remain in the third quarter. You know, there's a lot of things uh, that have to be addressed by South Florida in the coming weeks. Uh, certainly, obviously, number one uh, is, is a bull bid or a possible bull bid, and we heard Leroy Selman uh, tell everybody at halftime that South Florida will very aggressively uh, pursue every avenue that they have. The other thing that has to be done is the issue of, uh, of keeping uh, Jim Levitt here because he, I will guarantee you he is very much in demand in the college uh, football uh, circles. And uh, he and, and his staff and South Florida is going to have to find a way to step up and reward him and the staff for the phenomenal job uh, that they have done with this program. Because otherwise, it's very simple, Al. They're going to lose them. There's just no no question about that. And what a job he's done. This is his baby. I mean, when he was hired at the University of South Florida, they didn't even have footballs, let alone yep. a football field, and let alone a football program. And he has built this into a program that, in six years of football, is staring at a bowl game, staring at a nine-victory season. And the only losses in this 9-2 campaign at Arkansas, at Oklahoma. Unbelievable. The kickoff 
out of the end zone. You know, and, and the sad fact is uh, there are coaches in this conference, in Conference Florida, USA, we'll who are making triple uh, what Jim Lovett makes. Now, that's not right. I don't know about you. I wouldn't trade Jim or this staff for any staff in this conference, not even close. Well, when you look, if you even just took a wide shot of this field today here at the University of Houston, Dana Dimmel came from Wyoming, signed a very large contract, yet lost all of his games last year. This year is four and six, and in this building, I doubt if there are 5,000 football fans here for a Saturday afternoon in football in Texas. Dewan Green trying to turn the corner right side, knocked down very hard. So let me see a big hit. It's the same guy. <laughs> Onik Milligan. Boy, he is a tough, hard-nosed football player. And uh, I, there are some scouts in the box that are taking a long look at him today. I tell you, he, he plays the game. But again, my point in a situation like this is that, you know, Jim Levitt has built this South Florida program from the ground up, has 27. Oh, big hit. Wow. You know, average is close to 27,000 a game at Raymond James Stadium and has a football program on the move. And yet, there are a lot of coaches in Division I and Conference USA that are making a lot more money than he is. Markedly more. I mean, two to three times more. And, uh, well, you know, I, again, you know, he's, Jim, he doesn't want to leave there. I'll guarantee you. This is, you called it out. This is his baby. Uh, but, you know, you, you at least have to look at other opportunities, uh, and, and he's going to have to do that, and I hope that everything uh, can be worked out uh, with South Florida, not only for Jim, but this whole football staff, because uh, we don't want to lose this guy. Believe me, we do not want to lose this guy, because he will, I'll guarantee you, he will have, and we've said it from day one, Al, this will be a program that will dominate Conference USA in the future. You can just see it coming. They may be close to doing it already. Well, the Houston Cougars can say amen to that. Look at that scoreboard after three. 32-6 the advantage. Markwell, Blackwell, 39 yards to another senior. Hugh Smith, Hugh Smith more than 100 yards receiving. And then how about this guy? The one-handed interception, J.R. Reed and Blackwell. On a waltz into the end zone. It's been a waltz for the South Florida Bulls. 32-6 over the Cougars of Houston. Palm tree swaying here in Houston, Texas. We call it a Tampa Bay kind of day. It is windy, it is bright sunshine, and the South Florida Bulls leading 32-6 over the Houston Cougars. South Florida quickly out as Markwell Blackwell hits Chris Iskra on the pass. And by the way, don't touch that dial. Tonight's college football lineup continues. A pair of rivals in the Pac-10 square off. Washington takes on Washington State. Coleman won't want to miss this one tonight on Fox Sports Next. Who are you pulling for in that one? Else? I'm a Cougar all the way. <laughs> Washington State. Cougar alum. Brewer, left side, a good gain on first down as he's lassoed out of bounds. And now Jermaine you, Woodard on the tackle. If you're South Florida, now you really got to, you want to try to mix the run and pass. You want to get the clock moving. Uh, you know, sure, you'd like to get another score, but the biggest thing now is you want to just uh, control the ball and get this game uh, rolling, get this clock rolling here in the fourth quarter. Second down and four. Here's Blackwell trying to get the clock moving. This could be, again, his final performance as a South Florida Bull. It is as far as the regular season is concerned. And he's going to work the clock now with 15 seconds on the play clock. Yeah. And the reason we see two backs in the game here is, uh, is solely for protection against the uh, blitzes that they've been running. Here comes another one, a corner blitz coming. And here's Brewer. Cannot get any kind of blocking. And this has been a day of plenty of hits. In fact, the Bulls have been playing all the hits. Well, that guy, uh, uh, Hanik uh, Billiken, he's made a few of himself. There's another big one. Oh. Cedric King taking the brunt of that. DeJuan Green. Billiken again. Both teams playing the hits tonight. Third down and six. The Bulls with the lead at 32-6. Two tight ends in the game uh, for South Florida. It's all about clock time right now for South Florida. 
Brewer going nowhere, and so it'll be three now for the South Florida Bulls. Devin Sanderson in the game to punt. J.R. Reed, two interceptions. Definitely been a key player Love on defense. Four yard turnovers today for the South Florida Bulls that they've been able to Nicole take down away the from the Houston Cougars. For South Florida. Devin Sanderson to punt. Key Bell back to receive, standing near his 20 yard line. And again, they're going to be very deliberate in working the clock. Down to 10 seconds on the play clock. You know, and turnovers have been really the problem with this program all year, averaging a minus 1.1 per game for Houston. Sanderson Whoa, with a, a booming punt. Bell takes it back at the 15. Oh. Devon Kamen. Is there a flag? Yes, there is. <laughs> that was a little too easy in the open field, but uh, Javon Kamen, boy, he is a, a warrior on these special teams. 51 yards on the punt, and watch here. Does he have the face mask? No question. Oh, yeah. and I, you know what? That may be a 15-yarder, and uh, I, I think that that'll be a 15-yarder. Let's see. Yeah, he didn't let go, that's for sure. Face mask. Team, 15 yard penalty, first down, timeout. We've got 12 17 left to go in the contest. The South Florida Bulls inching closer to that ninth win of the season 32 6 over the Houston Cougars. Welcome back to Windy Houston for the South Florida Bulls. Rolling it up on the Houston Cougars 32 6. Markwell Blackwell so far today 22 completions, 333 yards. Very impressive. Had his hand in several touchdowns. He's run for three, passed for two. Houston football at the 32. Eddie against pressure finds Reynolds. Reynolds pulled down immediately. Excellent tackle by Maurice Jones. Great open field tackle by Maurice Jones. A just outstanding pressure and tackle right there. You know, now one thing that we are, we're trying to get a final on the score right now between TCU and East Carolina, but East Carolina had the lead with three minutes to go in that game. If that holds up, then South Florida is clearly the lead team in Conference USA if they were playing in it, unfortunately, or not this year. Pass complete. The key bell at the 45 yard line. There's for a first down. And, and again, extracurricular activity. Uh, back behind the ball. Let's take a look at your, your good rush by Chris Daly. Good power rush. One of the seniors for the South Florida Bulls. First down at the 45 yard line. There's a look at Hugh Smith, another one of the seniors. Has a touchdown reception today. More than 100 yards, and there's the key man on defense. Kawika Mitchell, Eddie, going deep. Nice coverage, good job all the way down the field. Dewan Brown with the coverage for the South Florida Bulls. Knew where the ball was, knew where the receiver was, and played excellent position. Just a redshirt freshman, and I know the coaching staff is extremely high on Dewan Brown. They think he's got a great, great future as a corner here at South Florida. You saw Ryan Hearn, another one of the seniors for the South Florida Bulls. He's done a little bit of everything. Was a walk-on at South Florida. Now the type of senior that you want to have in your program. JRV two picks today. At the 45, second down and 10, moving up front for the Bulls. They'll continue. Flag is down. Eddie going deep again. Can Brown. That's a, that, that should be and they, offensive and they did interference. Call it, and that should have been called. He was pushing them all the way down the field. Mark Hopkins. Great position by Dewan Brown. When you got the position, you just hold it and keep looking for the ball, and they'll call that every time. Now, yeah, that's a big play because now that means that's offsetting penalties. A free opportunity for the Houston Outside Cougars. On the defense, interference on the offense, penalties offset, replay second down. And I think Jib's a little upset there because some of the defensive line uh, after they jumped uh, did not continue to rush and you, you have to play the down out when you make a mistake. Don't compound it by making another mistake. DeAndre Rubin, a senior not able to play in this game today with a bad ankle. And what do you think about all the excitement that he has brought to this program? 
Kevin Verpale fighting the flu today. Still plays an excellent game. He'll be back next season. Eddie under pressure gets away from Pearson. But he gets pulled down by the South Florida Bulls. Jones again on the stop. And this will set up third about 10. Again, you see the stunt up front that's called by Earl Lane. Just a sack right there. And there's uh, Jones right on Johnny on the spot. Pearson had a chance for his ninth sack of the season. Terrence Royal came in uh, to uh, replace Pearson. Third and nine. Eddie gets away from Royal. Pick oh, up again. That's number three. Oh, no, no. This is a John senior, Miller. John Miller. And you love to see a senior make a big play in his final regular season game. And he has made some key plays for this defense in recent weeks. So Miller with the pick. The fifth pick today for the South Florida Bulls. What a great break on the ball by John Miller, the senior out of a pop guy. I mean, that was a terrific <laughs> football play. Watch this right here. Over the, look at the break he makes. And boy, you talk about selling out for the football. Man, that's what you expect out of a senior. South Florida with the football at the 31. 10-24 left to go in the contest. Reynolds has been held to 61 yards. That's the second lowest total of the season. At only 38 yards against TCU. That's been the key story in this ball game. Defensively, from the 31 yards. Markwell Blackwell still running the offense for South Florida. Callum on the run. Very little running room. South Florida wants to work the clock here. Up 32-6. They have win number nine in the bank. And now's an opportunity for the seniors to get their final snaps in. You know, Houston is really uh, stacking the front to here against the run. I think they're going to have to throw it some to uh, loosen them up a little bit. Blackwell well, this, this, will work the clock he down. Sure will. That's a senior for you, boy. That's smart. That is smart. Five seconds on the play clock. Roll out. Blackwell looking for her. The senior knocked away. Beautiful Blackwell play in the, the secondary Broke it up for the by Jesse Sowells. Now, Markwell Blackwell, what has he meant to the South Florida Bulls today? How about a nine-yard scramble for a touchdown? That gave the Bulls a 7-0 lead. And I love this play. Getting away from pressure. Still has the ability to find another senior. Hugh Smith on the 39-yard touchdown pass. And now he strolls into the end zone. Markwell Blackwell, a senior. Final regular season game has done it all today for the South Florida Bulls. And the major reason that they're up at 32-6. And along with that, extended his passing streak without an interception. Now, third best all time, closing in on number two. Blackwell, quick drop, trying to get away from pressure. Going deep again, looking for Iskra, throw it away. Good job there. You know, he was well covered, just rolled out of bounds. And the Bulls will punt the football. There's a look at Chris Daly. Senior out of Brooksville, John Miller, who just made that pick. Another senior, 14 seniors overall for the South Florida Bulls. You always have to say hi to mom. And then, guy that's been very, very busy today, Devin Sanders. Got a chance now with the wind at his back to really, uh, really launch one right here. <coughs> Key Bell back to receive. Great snap. Oh, he missed it. Out of bounds. <laughs> I knew I'd put the wham behind as soon as I said that. <laughs> Boy, Justin Daniel uh, has really had great snaps all day today. 9.20 left to go in the contest. South Florida can smell that ninth victory. 32-6, the lead at Houston. We talked about the windy day here in Houston, Texas. There's a look at that wind. It has certainly picked up here in the ball game as the ball game has progressed. Do you think he knows about the win? <laughs> I, I don't think so. I don't think so. He's oblivious to it, and for good reason, because the Bulls are up 32-6. When it 
it comes to basketball, the South Florida Bulls got Nebraska coming in for the Dodge shootout on Thursday, December 5th, 7 o'clock at the Sun Dome. You can see that game on ESPN2. Eddie remains a quarterback under pressure. Flag is down. Puts it up for Pritchett. <laughs> JRE just lays him out. And we've got a flag down in the backfield. It's an illegal motion against the Houston Cougars. Boy, what, a, what a game by J.R. Reed. And again, we talked about playing all the hits. This is another one of those hits. And again, coming all the way from the free safety oh. spot just to make sure. And J.R. Reed is actually down on the field right now. He was limping as he uh, came off uh, after that play and uh, was trying to get to the sideline and couldn't get there. You know what, I bet he might have got hit in the hip. This was, a, this was a heck of a collision right here with this big uh, tight end down the sideline. I'm guessing that might be a, a little bit of a hip pointer, just the way he's walking there. Uh, and the, yeah, the way he's moving that right leg. I'm thinking that he took a shot on the uh, hip. East Carolina with the victory, 31. What was that again? 31-28 with the victory. And so... That gives TCU a loss in Conference USA play. And so the South Florida Bulls, if they go on to win this game, which obviously they will at 32-6, will be 4-0 in Conference USA play or against Conference USA opponents. They're not in the conference until next year. Very close to a first down for the Houston Cougars on first down and 15. Well, that makes it the unofficial conference uh, champion, though, if they can uh, hold up here. Well, what's interesting about that is the fact that how many times did we hear from certain teams that the South Florida Bulls at the program six years in, what was that? They wanted uh, quality, not quantity? I, I, I believe that was the quote uh, yeah. that we had from uh, some people in the conference. Whom they, have all, whom they have already beaten, I might add. Here comes oh, wide open. On Going the deep to Middleton. Middleton cuts it back. And that is an easy touchdown against this young South Florida defense. 59 yards. Yeah, that, and Middleton with his second touchdown today. And it, again, what's sad about this is that the South Florida Bulls, you have no idea how much they've dominated this game. And when you see the final score, it may not show that. And that's a shame. They've played such a uh, great defense all day today. And, uh, you know, it's natural. You can't accept it as a coach, certainly, but they have just, just lost a little bit of their intensity here now when they went up uh, 32 to nothing. Too bad. Two plays, 68 yards, 56 seconds. And uh, it looks like uh, Houston is going to go for two again. Triple formation to the wide side of the field to the left. Pull it back to uh, Eddie right there. There you see it. Eddie's going to keep it. Makes it into the end zone for the touchdown. Excuse me, the uh, two point conversion. 32 14. We still have 824 left to go in the fourth quarter. South Florida with the lead over the Houston Cougars at 32 14. 59 yards on the touchdown, Eddie to Middleton. And South Florida is looking for the onside kick. Two plays, 68 yards, took them 56 seconds. South Florida with the lead at 32-14. I don't think I'd want to be one of those chairs. No, I, I don't think so either. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at 375 pounds right there, buddy. If chairs could talk, they would say. The onside kick. And Houston may have the football. Oh boy. And Houston has the football. Things are getting very interesting. 32-14, plenty of time. And the starters coming into the ballgame on defense for the South Florida Bulls. 
Again, they had the lead at 32-0 midway through the third quarter. Excellent onside kick. Boy, I tell you, he really got that ball up in the air. That was a, that was a great onside kick and really good execution uh, by the Houston special teams. Now, defensively, I'll tell you what, it's time to uh, regain your, your intensity right here because, uh, you know, this could get very There's interesting fast. Nick Eddy has thrown two touchdowns the last time, the last two times that he's had the football. At midfield, first and 10, Eddy, under pressure, simply throws it away. He's knocked out of bounds very hard by Maurice Jones. Excellent coverage uh, downfield. He really had no place uh, to go with the football. And uh, you've got the nickel defense in there for South Florida. J.R. Reed is in the game at free safety. You got Verpail at the nickel. You got John Miller in the game. And of course, you got Dewan Brown and uh, Hemingway at the corners. At midfield, second down and 10, 8 10 remaining in the contest. Reynolds on the fake. Eddie keeps it. And, I got and a, a late, flag is down. Late flag uh, coming in there right at the pile. I don't know what that could have been. Face mask possibly, I don't know. Eddie very slow getting up. Is this is against mask. the South Florida Bulls. And Jim Lovett's getting a little frustrated with all this. It's a five yard penalty. Face pass. On the defense, a five yard penalty. It remains second down. Uh, I, I look for the now, the, at, at some juncture here, I think South Florida's gonna have to crank up some blitzes and put some pressure on uh, Eddie. Second down, four yards to go. Complete for the first down. He did keep him in bounds, which uh, keeps the clock rolling. But again, as you called it, another first and 10 right at the 36 yard line for Houston. Mark Hopkins, the reception for the Houston Cougars. No huddle. Triple, now they're gonna huddle. Oh, the South Florida Bulls have called a timeout. Yeah, I think it's a good timeout uh, by Jim Lovett uh, and Rick Kravitz. Uh, get the defense together over there. Remind them we gotta start cranking here, boys. Let's go. What an emotional roller coaster ride for this football team. Of course, last week, the huge win over number 25, Bowling Green. You've gotta bring that emotion into this ball game. You jump out to a 14-0 lead, then there's another lull at halftime. You come up and you score three touchdowns in the third, another lull. So it's been a roller coaster ride of emotions for this football team. Well, it has been, and you see Rick Kravitz and Jim Levitt there uh, talking to the defense, trying to get them cranking. But uh, Al, I think there's no question about it. We talked it uh, in the open. A little bit of a letdown today after a very emotional uh, victory, uh, their first victory ever against the top 25 team last week. And, uh, you know, it was not only a win, but I mean, a, a very convincing win against a good football team. And, uh, you know, going on the road here, it's just been a little bit of an up and down game. You called it, and that's you're exactly right on. And uh, but somehow now you need to make some plays on defense and get it cranking again here. It's, and it's hard to get back. It really is. Eddie now with a career high 334 yards and two touchdowns, but he also has the five interceptions. First and 10, Eddie with time. Trying to find Robinson, pass low, incomplete. There's still plenty of time in this football oh, game. 7.43 remaining. And I'll tell you, if, if they should happen to score again, obviously you're gonna see another onside kick, and I'll tell you, uh, if he can kick it like that again, that is very, very tough to uh, recover. And, and they and this team, believe me now, this team has some uh, quality wide receivers in Robinson and uh, Milton in particular, those two, number 13 and number eight, they are quality players. They can run, they have good size. Middleton well over 100 yards and has a pair of, in fact, he's got both touchdown receptions today. 119 yards on the game. 
Looking deep for Middleton again. Coverage by Ron Hemingway. And, and the I, Cougars yeah. wanted yeah. a pass interference, yeah. and it looked like the official was reaching back to his hip pocket, yeah. but it, thought differently. It, you know what? Because the ball was so badly overthrown. Right there, right there, they wanted the interference call, but the ball was totally uncatchable, and that's the only reason he didn't throw the flag. Again, that was a, what we call a double route. That was he made a little stutter move and then, to, and then a takeoff uh, after that on Hemingway. There you see Hemingway right there trying to, uh, get, they don't go in the huddle, they just get the call automatically from J.R. Reed. Third down and 10. Three deep zone. The blitz. He's the pass completes. Yeah, it looks like they're going to spot it. Keevel, very close to first down yardage. That sets up fourth, and I think about uh, looks about like a one. yard. Yeah, about one. So uh, the nickel goes off the field. Let's take a look at it here. We couldn't tell from up here. No, yeah, that looks like a good catch. Good Clean throw. catch. Yep. Fourth and one. Reynolds in the backfield. This is a big play now. Bell in motion. And off to rest. Oh. And he's knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. And the senior, Chris Daly. And that even brings a smile from the face of Jim Levitz. That is the third, fourth down stop now they've had today. I mean, this is huge. Every one of them has been huge. Look at the penetration by Chris Daly. That is out, boy. Well, you just love to have a to have a senior have a day like he's had. Mighty Cougar basketball team returns to action. The Wednesday senior from Brooksville, Brooks, Brooksville's Chris Daly with the huge play on fourth down as the Houston Cougars were trying to get back into this game. Now down, 32, 14, 6:53, and you know the South Florida Bulls going to work the clock here. Markwell Blackwell remains a quarterback. Now let's see if they decide to uh, throw some against this uh, very, very tough and overloaded front uh, most of the time against the running game today. Looks like some movement, yep. Both sides were moving. It was a matter of who initiated first. Hard to tell from here. They're both, <laughs> as always, they're both pointing at each other. Prior to the snap, false start up top. Five yard penalty, it remains first down. Once again, a loss of two yards on that play. Let's take a look at it. Let's see the movement. A yeah, little flinch maybe by the left guard. Reynolds has been held to 59 yards. Again, came in averaging 134 yards per game. That was Shelly Houston. 6.53 remaining in the contest. Gallum on the run, oh. able to turn the corner. Gallum with the first down and much more over midfield. And the Bulls needed that first down to keep the clock going. Right. 30 yards on the game, even though it stops as he goes out of bounds. Now the South Florida offense can work the clock. Key thing here is nice job of bouncing it all the way outside because it was certainly stuffed up inside. And uh, it, boy, he's got some speed down the sideline. Key thing now is you got field position back. They mark this at the 46. Here you see Greg Fry, the offensive line coach. He's happy with that one. 15 on the play clock. They'll work this down inside five. Vince Brewer over the 45-yard line. Vince Brewer, ball carrier. When you see South Florida put two tight ends on the field, that's, that's for a running block. How about some hoops coming up Tuesday night? The South Florida Bulls will take on a team from the Big East, Providence, 7 o'clock from the Sun Dome. See it right here on Fox Sports Net. Good win last night. Uh, congratulations to Seth Greenberg. Different type of Bulls basketball. Altron Jackson, B.B. Walden no longer on the team. They've graduated. They're gone. So the South Florida Bulls having to learn about life without B.B. and Altron. They win their opener. They now have Providence in a big game. The team from the Big East coming up on Tuesday. Gallup caught behind the line of scrimmage, and this time the Houston Cougars are not going to let him get away. Brian Hill, the stop. 
for the Cougars. Yep, yeah, he just got great, great penetration in the gap, and that was a dead play uh, right from the get. And uh, that's going to set up third now in about 12. Both tight ends, they're going to stay in the game. They're getting the call from the sideline from Rod Smith. Play clock is down to seven. Don't want to get a delay here. They barely need it. Isk around the reception near the 40 yard line, still well shot. First down yardage, and this will set up fourth down. Yeah, this uh, looked like he might have strained his hamstring there. Uh, he's going out. Brings the Hue Huey uh, Whitaker back in. Hugh Smith back in. This will bring up fourth down and five. And you wonder in a situation like this, will Blackwell do the old pooch punt? Yeah, he's, which he's, he's been very good at. In fact, I think he's had like five punts and he's put four inside the 20. I'm guessing that's what it is. Yeah, he's a little bit deeper. He's got two backs in there. That's that's what this is going to be. No question about that. Let's we'll see if they can get it down now inside. And they Look do. at that. Boy, he's Look been very, that. very effective with that all year long. Okay, now what has he done today? He has run for three <laughs> touchdowns. He's passed for two and he has put a punt down inside the 10 yard line. He deserves a smile. Blackwell leaves 23 of 36, 305 yards today. And his interception streak goes on. Interception less streak, I should say. Right. And, and when the offense really was struggling through the middle part of the game, he's the guy that got him up and going with his ability to move and make plays. Comes from a great family. They've been very, very supportive uh, of him, and he's done very, very well in school. And, and uh, leaves South Florida with really uh, with a degree, with, and, and with his name in the record books. Eddie from his own end zone as the fullback feathers, and he is brought down not featherly by Kawika Mitchell. And now we're told officially on the stats that Markwell Blackwell is 10 completions short of going to number two on the all-time interception list list <laughs> uh, he's not going to get that chance today any play action Whoa. gets hit from behind that's, a, that's ball that's is on the ground bounced right up to a houston player that was laying on the ground and you know what was interesting is that you see number 57, Chris Daly, the senior, very slow getting up. You know he would have loved to have recovered a fumble, but right now he's got some other things on his mind as well. Very slow getting up. Training staff is out on the field very, very rapidly. Jim Levitt, that's one of their seniors. Boy, they don't want to see him get hurt. Dr. Leffler's out there. Let's take a look at it, see what happens here. If we can. Tim Jones with the hit, forcing the fumble. Right there, and he's going after the loose ball. Right there, going after the loose ball. Looks like he landed awkwardly on his left shoulder to me, Al. Oh. We have 328 left to go in the contest. South Florida with the lead at 32-14. Daly able to lead the game under his own power. Eddie tries to hit Evans. <laughs> I'm wondering if he was over the line of scrimmage when he threw that. There's Chris. He really looked pretty good coming off the field. He may just have had the uh, wind knocked out of him because he really looked good coming off the field. Looked fine. That's good. That's good news. <laughs> Blackwell's even, you know, he's not a doctor, but it looks like he plays one on TV. He's done everything. Tonight, you know, he even has a pooch punt. Eddie. Picked off again, and it's John, John Miller, the Miller, senior. Good His for second him. pick. 
Oh, you just love to see these uh, seniors go out the right way. Six interceptions for the South Florida Bulls, two by the senior, John Miller. And the beat goes on for Houston. And they have had now 38 giveaways this year. 38 giveaways on offense. And the wow. Bulls crowd giving their defense a standing ovation. And John Miller, the senior, getting a hug. His final regular season game. You know it's got to feel good. And Markwell Blackwell not leading the offense on the field. It'll be Ronnie Banks. So Blackwell is done for the day. Maybe done for his career at South Florida. Quentin Callum on the run. Pulled out of bounds with three minutes left to go. You know, and, uh, it's funny, I just had a, a good conversation with the quarterback coach, Rod Smith, this morning. And uh, Banks has really been coming on now in the second half of the season. Look at Jim Levin here. <laughs> Stay in bounds. <laughs> <laughs> He's working it. He is working it. Uh, he, he doesn't know any other way to do it. That's why he's a good football coach. Excellent football coach. He's done an incredible job with his football team. Vince Brewer keeping the legs going over the 30-yard line, 254 and counting. Just good to see we got a lot of backups in in the offensive line. See Joe Bain in the game, a wide receiver. Running Banks, it'll be his team next year. Sean King's uh, brother is just uh, leaving the field. He was in the last couple plays. Banks is thrown for a pair of touchdowns, both against Oklahoma. And he will get this offense next year as the Bulls will go into Conference USA. Earl Lane talking to his defensive line. What a job they've done today. The six picks, a major reason. The pressure that the defensive line has put upon Nick Eddy. Over the 25-yard line on the run. You're going to set up fourth down, and I, I think if uh, you're South Florida, you, you go for it here. You try to run the football again, run the clock. It's down two minutes. And uh, Houston Houston takes a timeout just before the uh, two-minute uh, clock goes. Look at Gramatica. He's, do you think he's working the coach here? Do you say, come on, coach. <laughs> you know, wouldn't you like three more points? I know I missed hey, Steve, those point afters. You'd like a chance to make up for that. But it's obvious I think they will go for the run on the or go for the uh, first down on fourth. You know, Sa Santiago hurt his knee this week, and I really think that affected him on uh, his knee of his plant leg, and I think that affected him on the uh, extra points that he missed. A lot of interception between those two guys. Four interceptions. J.R. Reed with two. John Miller with two. There's Chris Daly. He looks fine. I know his family's watching, so uh, he, he, he's okay. I was talking to uh, Rick Kravitz uh, yesterday, and he said that the leadership defensively by Kawika Mitchell, Greg Walls, and Chris Daly. Uh, Tucker, uh, Andriniak, uh, the leadership has just been outstanding by his seniors on that defense. There you see Rod Smith, Al Banks. Fourth down, two. Two o oh two. Good, good call. Oh, no. You need to they get the ball snapped. snapped. They should have snapped it because they, <laughs> they tried to draw him offside and the uh, center uh, didn't snap it. And that would have been the first down. And now Brewer is yep. stuck well beyond the uh, line of scrimmage. And again, that's experience as far as the quarterback's concerned. So next year, Banks will have to make that play. Well, that's really the responsibility of center of the center to snap the ball when they jump. So Houston will get the football. 156 remaining. An official timeout. One of the players for the Houston Cougars, very slow coming off the field. That is uh, Jesse Sowells, and he's been on that field throughout the day for this Houston Cougar defense. You know, it's going to be a major matchup tomorrow. 
in hockey as the Florida Panthers face off against the mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Watch as the Cats try to claw their way to another win. Panthers versus the mighty Ducks tomorrow, 8 o'clock right here on Fox Sports Net. You know, the frustrating thing uh, for this uh, coaching staff and these players now is they're going to have to sit back and wait. Uh, I don't, and I don't know how long, uh, a week to 10 days, to know if they're going to have an opportunity to, uh, to go on and keep playing. Now, in a situation like that, will you continue to work out? Will you continue to practice? I, I think you'll have to get some feeling as to at least what your odds are. But, uh, yeah, I would think you need to keep working out, certainly. Probably won't practice. Eddie gets hammered behind the line of scrimmage. Chris, Chris Daly. Daly in on the sack. And again, the senior able to smile after this one had plenty of help as well. Tim Jones. Whoa. You know, this has been a really a great uh, three weeks for this program in these three uh, final games of the season. Uh, keep that winning streak going at home and some great victories. Joffrey Reynolds nice. held under 60 yards. Rushing today again came in number six in the nation, 134 yards per game. The South Florida Bulls defense in the top 10 against the rush defensively. We're under a final minute. South Florida will go to nine and two in year six of football. And again, those losses at Arkansas, at Oklahoma. Four victories against teams from Conference USA. A victory over North Texas, a team that played in a bowl game a year ago. And another sack. This by another senior, Jerniak, out of Orlando. You know, and the clock uh, continues to run here, 35. You know, Al, I was so excited. I was in Germany uh, for our league meetings the last couple weeks, and I called my wife Brenda four o'clock in the morning German time to get the scores on Saturday night in the South Florida games, which was, of course, 10 o'clock at night here. And of course, the question that we all have is, what are you doing up at four o'clock in the morning on Al, Saturday night I in never, Germany? <laughs> Al, I could never. Without get, your I, wife. I could never get my times as straight <laughs> when I'm over. I'm always up That's all right. night long. Let's stick to that story. And another interception, this time Ron Hemingway with the pick for the South Florida Bulls. Seven interceptions in the ball game and that's it what a great win on the road uh, for Jim Levitt and his staff unbelievable what a great season uh, uh, this team is deserving to go to there's Jim Levitt shaking hands uh, with some of the staff on at Houston this team deserves to go to a ball nine and two the South Florida Bulls in year six of football their second full year of Division I football. Nine and two. The South Florida Bulls, 32-14. There's one of the seniors, Greg Waltz, his final regular season games. Given thanks to the fans. Journeyak as well. 32-14, the Bulls win it.